We're all set for the second day and the second match of this home fiber net presents triangular series, the tri-series between Nepal, Netherlands and Namibia, of course, Nepal and Netherlands. They batted out yesterday in which Nepal was defeated by 20 runs and the home team will be facing Netherlands today. Tribune University International Cricket Ground in Kirtipur is the venue that's the home of cricket in Nepal and we're all set for yet another contest. Netherlands versus Nepal. So Ayush was there with the two captains a while ago for the all-important toss. Good morning and welcome to the second T20I International between Nepal and Netherlands. The sun is out here in TU Cricket Ground and we are all set for the toss. Rohit Kumar Porel, Scott Edwards, Narayan Kuti, the match referee, all in readiness. So it's Rohit who will be spinning the coin. Heads is the call. <laughs> Right. finally you have won the toss, what have you decided? I uh, will bowl first, uh, looking at TU's condition, I think chasing is a good option, so I will chase. Uh, you batted for your second in yesterday's game as well, now you are electing to bat in the second as well. So, any specific reason batting in this wicket? Yeah, if you consider last year's performance, uh, Nepal has been very good in chasing, uh, especially. Uh, and yesterday's game, I would say it's a, it was a very competitive game. Uh, it, it went to the last over, uh, it could have gone any way. So yeah, I think um, we'll chase we'll chase, and yeah, we're very confident to chase. The game went close yesterday, so uh, after the game, what was the conversation in the dressing room? Uh, the converse, conversation was very clear. Uh, the, the, the areas where we need to improve, uh, we focused on that, uh, especially in the death overs where we, we need to be more smarter. So yeah, the discussion was all about that only. Any changes in the side? Yeah, two changes. Uh, Bivek and uh, Bivek and Avinas are out and uh, in, I don't know, I forgot. Yeah. All the best for the game, Roy. Thanks. Scott, happy batting first in this wicket? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, it's obviously a little bit later in the day, so um, yeah, we would have batted first anyway. You had a mixed tournament in the league too. You won two games now, shifting to the T20 format. Like, how difficult it is to like change from the 50 overs to T20 format? Uh, not too difficult. I think we're we're reasonably used to changing between T20s uh, and M1 days. So now nah, for us, it's just yeah, getting our getting our mind space around around the T20s now, and uh, yeah, looking forward to a good series. Before moving on to the T20 World Cup, how do you think this triangular series would be a preparation moving on to the T20 World Cup? Yeah, it's obviously massively important for us. Um, we've got this and, and a couple more series before the World Cup. So, yeah, every game for us is, is massive in, in terms of that preparation. All the best for the match. Well, that's the news from the centre. Nepal have won the toss and elected to ball first. Interesting decision this by Rohit Powdell. The so Nepal winning the toss. They'll bowl first and they've invited the uh, Netherlands to bat first. We'll take a short break and we'll come back with a lot of actions.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand up for the national anthem of the Netherlands. Now, please stand up for the national anthem of Nepal. Well then, Nepal taking on Netherlands today. Both the teams pumped up after that national anthem session. The umpires ready, the match referee ready, and the players are certainly ready. It's going to be another cracker of a match. We had an interesting contest yesterday. Nepal went on to lose by 20 runs, but the match was far more close than what the scoreboard suggests because at one point of time, Dibana Singh Aidi and Karan Kesi were really threatening to take Nepal home, but two wickets... Uh, took uh, the match away from Nepal and let's have a look at the lineups Nepal two changes in there so Pratish Chisi has come in in place of uh, Lalit uh, Abhinash Bora and Lalit the left arm senior pro has been brought in in the place of Vivek Kumar Yadav Anil Kumar Shah is still not in the team that's an uh, interesting decision made by the think tank of Nepalese side and Netherlands they're playing the first contest in this uh, tri-series, Scott Edwards, the captain, Aryan Dutt, Max O'Dowd, the tall batter, Michael Levitt, Noah Kroos, Sibrant Engelbrecht, Teza Nina Manuru, Timu Gukten, Vanda Merva, and Wesley Berisi still there. So it's a very, very strong Netherlands side. Nepal, with those two changes, I think the players to watch here would be Dipendra Singh ID and Rohit Portal. They were the highest run getters yesterday. So it's, it's a very balanced team, and we are sure that we'll, we'll have a cracker of a contest. And with me in the com box is my partner, Kiran. A very good morning, Kiran. A very strong Netherlands team. Very good morning, Shachin, and good morning to all our viewers. Yes, indeed, Netherlands have always been that team who has been threatening with that experience of playing in senior level cricket for a long time. If you have a look at head to head, Nepal and Netherlands have clashed nine times in T20s where Nepal have won four of them, Netherlands being victorious on four occasions and one match has no result. So interestingly, if you have a look at the stats, Sachin, for Nepal, winning and batting first, they have won three times. Sorry, winning and bowling first. So that might have been triggered in the head of Captain Rohit Bodel. That's why he opted to bat despite winning the toss. That has always been the formula here. If you win the toss, bat for, uh, bowl first. That has been the approach of most of the captains uh, playing in this venue here. The captain of Namibia, the makeshift captain, had a different idea yesterday. And his uh, team 
actually went on to win this match and defended that 207 runs against Nepal. And for Netherlands, they are playing a T20 international after 479 days. So the last T20I they played was against South Africa in Adelaide, where they managed to pick up that 13 runs famous victory. So this is going to be an exciting contest and will be interesting to see how Max O'Dowd and his partner approach uh, this, this uh, batting cause. And I'm sure Netherlands will also be looking at that score of 200 after Namibia have shown the way yesterday. Absolutely, especially the way Eaton batted yesterday, that will be in her head for a long, long time. What a mesmerizing inning that was. On the other hand, Nepal have to collect themselves. Forget about us today. It's a fresh day, fresh start. Nepal is just a win away because that win will change the whole scenario of the mentality of the players, the dressing room and everything. On the other hand, Netherlands, mind you, they are not going to ho hold back. So this is going to be one hell of a contest. Today here in TU International Ground, Nepal facing Netherlands, winning the toss, electing to ball. Michael Levitt along with Max O'Dowd, the two opening batters for Netherlands. And last time, Sompal Kami started the proceedings, so I think it will be the same story. Or Rohit Paudel will change the tactics. He had changed the tactic. It's going to be Karan Kesi. Nepal's famous bowling all-rounder, Karan Kesi. He'll be bowling to Michael Levitt. Karan is bowling from the Chobar end. Right arm medium pace. He does not have that swift pace, but he is very, very effective. And Max, Max O'Dowd, he loves uh, playing at this venue, on this track, Karan Kesi. He took one wicket yesterday. One wicket yesterday was on the expensive side, though, but you can also understand because the form Lofty Eaton was, everybody was going out of the park. The Nepali bowlers suffered against the mighty hitting of Lofty Eaton. Yeah, there were actually two highlights yesterday. The innings of Lofty Eaton and that catch from Bibek Yadav. A stunner. Nepal will need a lot of them today so that they can resist Netherlands in minimum target and bounce back. On the other hand, Netherlands, mind you, they have got a very deep batting lineup, Sachin. And they have got star players who have been playing for the nation for a long time. So it will be very, very hard for Nepali batters to resist the flow of the runs yet again. And what that innings from Lofty Eden has done is it, it has set the tone for, for the contest, for the tournament, in fact. So, Karan Kisi steams in. Hit on the back foot. First delivery right on the money, hitting the deck hard on the fourth, fifth stump line. Batsman giving respect to that ball. Michael Levitt is in strike. He will be watchful for the time because he needs to assess the condition, the pitch how current's gonna approach him and then play his shot accordingly. So Nepal must have done a lot of homework. There must have been a lot of chat in the dressing room regarding how to approach Netherlands. Closer look at their star batters, their batting techniques, the flaws they generate while playing. So we are yet to see current KC just balling regularly on that fourth stump line Sachin. So they are coming with a plan. Absolutely, and the plan from the Netherlands team that, that Dutch side is also clear. I think they look to score those boundaries as well, and, and the ball is coming onto the bat really well. Mike Levitt, he didn't hurry on to those two initial deliveries from Karan Kesey. He just waited and just tried to time it. The ball went to the fielder directly, but the pitch is playing good. That's what we can make out of the very first two deliveries. So it's a good toss to win for Rohit Baudil, but he'll have to make sure that. He can contend. Oh, he has gone after Karan Casey straight away up in there. Three fielders running behind it. Falls on no man's land. And the batters will come back for the second run. So the intentions are very clear from Netherlands. They are not going to hold back for long. Let's have a look at that shot again on that same line. This time he decided to go over the top, clear that infield. 
Remember, field restrictions are on, so there are very quite a few protection. Saving that boundary, ball lands in no man's land, so we might be seeing lots of chipping shots today, Shachin, especially during the first power play. There is no reason not to do that because remember we are in the power play overs and they I'm sure want to go over the infield. Good change of pace. This is fantastic balling by Karan Kisi. Invited Levitt to go after him again and there was a change in pace which Levitt realized it later. So good contest going on between Levitt and Karan Kisi. So Max O'Dowd. He's played four T20I innings at this venue, and he has scored 172 run, uh, 72 runs, and he averages 57, a whopping 57. He loves batting here. The highest T20I score at this venue is 133 against Malaysia, and guess who? It was the same tall opener for Netherlands. Physically very fit, technically very fit. Nepal would love to have his wicket as early as possible. Gets up the mark. Let's Why? see. He's very watchful. Just opened the face of the bat at the very last occasion. Just played it down the ground towards the leg side for an easy single. Yeah, for Nepal, they have to take early wickets, especially of Max O'Dowd will be very, very crucial for the team because once he sets, it's always very difficult to get rid of him. So Nepal has to strike and has to strike early. Partnership of very capable pair, Michael Levitt and Max O'Dowd. Smashes this, almost slaps it back. Fortunately for him, the ball does not carry on to Gulshan Jha, was waiting for that catch there. So, an eventful first over already. In fact, that's the end of the first over, five for none. Well then, five for none. Two shots that went up in the air and could have been held on as well. And straight away, Rohit Powdell has introduced spin. It will be his ace spinner in Lalit Ras Bangsi, who was rested yesterday. He's been brought into the team today. And straight away, he will be bowling the second over from the TU gate end. It was his birthday yesterday. Happy belated birthday, Lalit Rajbanshi. So, there is a lot of responsibility oh, Lalit. on Lalit. The crowd, the team, the management, the coach, the captain has Lalit. expected a lot, Lalit. lot from this exciting spin bowler. So, what will be interesting to see is the length Lalit bowls because Lalit, all the fielders on the offside are inside the circle. So, going inside out would be a great option for both Max O'Dowd and Michael Levitt. But they'll have to be careful because Lalit, he can also come with his arm into the leg, uh, right hander. Yeah, it will be very tricky for the batters to face him because he has got that variation. He has got that lovely loop on the ball. He gives flight, turn is always an offer for him. Bowling, bowling. He's not giving that loop there. Bowling tried to once and very good running from this pair. They took on Kushal Bhutel who is very swift on the field and he has a good throwing arm as well but the batter Levitt, he exactly, in fact it was Max O'Dowd who exactly knew where the ball had gone and the pace of the ball as well allowing them to come back. Look at that, the trust they develop on each other is impeccable that's way down the leg side the keeper had no chance whatsoever a very sluggish start i must say from lalit rajbanshi ball race towards the boundary first extra in the form of white came to netherlands so i'm not sure this is the right approach because lalit is cautious not giving room outside uh, the off some because all the fielders are inside the circle 
but you cannot overcompensate and bowl the, those quicker deliveries and towards the leg side because Max it out is also very strong towards the leg side. Again, Lalit has to say, he has to thank the keeper, in fact. The great, great Rahul Dravid used to say, two great spinners, Arbazan and Anil Kumble. If it goes down the leg side, it's not my fault, it's your fault. Could have been another five wides here. Lucky Lalit this time. Indeed. Ah, better come back. So that's where he should be bowling, just outside that off stump, getting a hint of turn, just cramping the batter for the room. On the other hand, what happens is when you are overdoing things, you leak runs. Because once Max Adal settles that he's going to ball into the leg, I'm very sure he's going to step out or play that sweep shot, which was really effectively done by Lofty Eaton yesterday. He's bowled flat in this over. Almost all five deliveries, all five legal deliveries, he's been bowling flat. And the two wides towards the onside and bonus runs for Netherlands. Nepal cannot leak runs. The offside, but I'm not sure that's the right way, that's the positive way to get a wicket because if Nepal is looking for a wicket, Lalit has to bowl much fuller and also toss up the deliveries and invite the batters to go after him. Yeah, even inviting batter to go over the top or, you know, leave his crease, come over and play the shot will be a great tactic. Last ball of the over, he made room for himself. Look how quickly Levitt has understood the balling and adjusted accordingly. So with that dot delivery and over number two, 10 run came of that. Netherlands 15 without loss. for none an expensive over of Lalit Rasbansi's first over Karan Kesi balls from the Chobar and slaps it again and straight to the field this time a very good catch the safest pair of hands on the field grabs it and it's Max O'Dowd who will have to walk back to the pavilion because this was a short delivery wanted to go hard at it she's not impressed at all she wanted quick runs and a big partnership first up and Max O'Dowd has been dismissed in this fashion let's have a look at that he was trying to go hard on that delivery just managed to get the top is and who else Dipendra Singh Ori the tiger pounces on the delivery like a tiger pounces on its prey grabs it there's no chance that ball's gonna drop off his hand so dangerous very dangerous Max O'Dowd is back to pavilion very cheaply indeed just for four runs of six deliveries an early blow for Netherlands, but Nepal will accept it gladly. So, finally, a pacer has gone wicket in the first power play, Shachin. So, Netherlands losing their first wicket, 15 for 1. Karan Kesi, good length again, oh good, interesting <laughs> approach this by Karan Kesi, aggressive approach, realized the batter had come down the track, aim for the stump, angle bridge, eventually friendly smiles exchanged. Yeah, that was quite unintentional from Karan Kesi, I'm very sure about that, he was aiming for that stump, angle bridge just trying to save himself, lucky that it hit his bat. And then Karan, apologetic, with a gentle smile in his face. But he's not going to be apologetic and gentle while he's bowling. And he shouldn't be either. Got the wicket of the very first delivery in his second over. He is bombed. In shorter length. 
trying at the stump. Gulshan Jha, nowhere close to it. That's Sudeep Sharma, the tournament director of the Disown 5 Minute Presents Tri Series. Sixteen for one, the score. A great comeback indeed, uh, Shachin, after that expensive over from Lalit Rajbansi where he was wavered with his line and length. But Karan Kesi, what a start he had in this over. Just conceded one run in three deliveries. He has to finish well in the passion he started his over. Uh, this time he has gone aerial and connected really well. He was put into some pressure by the Nepali ballers. This time the length was there, a touch full than the previous deliveries by Karan Kesey. It was in the good length area, but there was width for Levitt to operate on, and he has deposited the ball out of the ground. First six for the Dutch team. He lashed onto it as soon as he saw that ball coming full. In front foot, banged it. Way she goes over the top. First six, that will give him a lot of confidence. Michael Levitt playing an 11 of 8 deliveries. The first early blow, a big one for Netherlands. Max Dowd is back in the pavilion. So Levitt very cleverly is taking his time trying to unsettle. Karan Casey already had smashed a big six of his ball. Here comes with the fifth delivery of the over. Slashed really hard and a boundary to follow up that massive six. Karan Casey, he had the keeper up. Width was there, and with that width and that pace, I think it was always a dangerous attempt by Karan Kesey and stood back. Michael Levitt there. He made sure that the ball went over the third man fielder and the point fielder. So after the fall of the wicket, Levitt has taken the responsibility on his soldiers to excel the scoreboard, excel the run rate, and he has done magnificently well. Six followed by a four with the last delivery of the over coming up. Good comeback by Colin Casey again. Shy at the stump, but this time I think there will be overthrows. Four signaled by Empire, four overthrows. Lucky runs here for Netherlands, but they will not mind it at all. The idea was right by Colin Casey. We'll come back to that. 30 for one. So Michael Levitt, yeah. it was a good yoker on money by Karan Kese straight into his hand and he throws it back off the bat of Michael Levitt. That's the reason why the Nepali ballers, Nepali fielders were appealing against that call. But four runs, four extra runs for Netherlands. Yeah. Yes. So uh, tell you what, that was not intentional from the batter. He was just trying to get back into the crease. So he reached for his bat. Fortunately for them, the ball hit the bat and it rushed towards the boundary. That's why it was given as four runs. Otherwise, if it was intentional, it would have been a dead ball, a dot ball, I must say. Lalit has been very flat right from the start and I don't think that's the right attitude to go at these batters. He's been on money, all right, but he's been too flat and straight into the right hand of Karan Casey. Stuck the bat as well. And the ball went to the boundary. The umpire called a boundary. It was inside the crease, so there was no obstruction on the field. Driven really well. And we'll find the fence again. Now runs coming thick and fast. These are easy pickings. This is the first time Lalit actually offered some air to the ball. It was really full, but it was wide, and all Levitt had to do was find the gap, which he did. <laughs> and Netherlands marching on now. 
it was slightly over his delivery into the batter's arc. Just opened the front foot. It was easy, easy picking for the batsman. Lalit Rajbanshi really needs to be careful here because in the last over he was aiming on that leg stump line. But here he has given some ear. That is encouraging, but is way too full. Now he's bowled at his pads. Deceived, in fact, the batter. So 65,000 viewers watching us live on YouTube. Many more watching us live on television as well. And some support for the Dutch team as well, the Netherlands. Comes down the track this time. There could have been only one result and the ball has flown all the way. Came down the track. Now these two are looking so very comfortable against the Nepali bowling lineup. Bowling attack, came down the track, got to the pitch of the delivery, flat, out of the ground. That was a brave move from the batter. He dances down the ground, knowing that the keeper is up, connected it beautifully. That's the confidence that we can see in the batter. Levitt, this time around, not afraid to play his shot. Causing some problem for Lalit here. Now he's again back to his normal line where he bowled in the last over he didn't go for runs mind you it was the extras that cost him runs but in this yeah, over already a four and six that has forced him to go back to his basics what he opted in the very first over expensive over already and off to a flyer now netherlands 41 already wait, wait. one delivery left for the fourth over that was the final delivery four overs have been bowled one down for 41 netherlands The crowd slowly building in. It's no surprise that people come in and enjoy this day of cricket. It's T20. Nepal taking on Netherlands. Nepal not in a very good form. Sompal Kami. He's been introduced by Captain Powell. He'll also be bowling from the Chobar end. Now he has an added responsibility of taking wickets and making sure that the Netherlands will not score as freely as they're doing right now. E. Right on the money in the very first delivery, just balled on that poor stump line. Angle bridge played it with soft hands just for a single. Talking about Sompal Kami, he has served Nepal for, for a long period of time. He has got that experience, he has got that variations, but was very expensive yesterday. He looks very fit, has a very smooth run-up, delivers the ball, follow-through is very smooth as well. But for a pacer, like look at that fitness, how long has he been carrying it for? Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, because anything that short will be punished. And Michael Levitt has now moved on to 37 of 17. He came down the track, it was a short delivery. The intent was good from... Sompal Kami, but the bat flew was so quick that he pushed the ball, he hit the ball ferociously towards the onside, towards the square leg reason for a boundary. Yet another boundary now. Netherlands off to a flyer, 46 for one. Nepal desperately needing a wicket now. After the fall of wicket, Levitt has become more aggressive than how he started. The innings, mind you, there you go again, balled into that stomp, middle stomp line. He crashed it, made room for himself. There was no chance for the fielder. Field restrictions on, ball raced towards the boundary. So back-to-back -back boundaries, the story from the previous overs, continuing in this over as well. Sumpal Kami under pressure straight away. A great batting in display from Levitt. Gave himself that room. He was anticipating short length delivery from Sompal Kami. Now Sompal Kami straight away under so much of pressure because he was expensive yesterday as well. 
And 50 comes up for Netherlands in just 27 deliveries. They're going at over 11 runs and over. You'll have to credit Lofty Eden yesterday for the way he initiated the series. It was very aggressive against the Nepali bowlers. And that's the reason why Netherlands have also decided that they'll, they'll target a score of over 200 runs. So much fuller delivery this time, not giving that width for the batter to free his arms. Levitt is looking dangerous. He started fairly slowly, mind you. He's already 37 of just 18 deliveries. After the first over, he decided to cut loose after the wicket of Max Dowd. He hasn't looked back yet. Looking very, very dangerous for Nepal. Gives himself that room again, and this time again, not exactly what he intended, but gets a boundary. Took the lower half of the bat. Didn't strike the middle of the bat at all, but doesn't matter. Because Swampal Kami has been treated with yet another boundary and pin drop silence in the crowd. And you cannot set field for this shot of shots. Up the bottom as race towards the boundary. There was protection in there, mind you, but the outfield in TU, as you always know, has a reputation of flying the balls. It goes to the boundary in no time. So another four, three boundaries already in the over with the delivery to go. 13 of the over, 14 of the over, another expensive over, 55 for one after five, Netherlands. What? So five overs, 54 for one. Michael Levitt has already got that start. Can he convert now? Rohit Podil has now introduced the Tiger. Devendra Singh Aidi picked up a couple of wickets yesterday as well. In fact, one wicket yesterday. Second match of this tri series. Full toss. Fortunately for him, no harm done. Engelbred hasn't had anything to do so far because his partner at the other end is already 42 of 21. Michael Levitt. We already saw the fastest T20I 100 ever. Appeal, but I think the ball had pitched outside the line of leg stump. It came in with the angle. Devendra Nath Subedi unmoved. He's not happy with it. Dipendra Singh Hari, he wants that wicket. Let's have a look at this in the replay. Ball was pitched. Very good decision. The ball had pitched outside the line of leg stump, so there's no way that could have been given out. And he sustained the pressure with ease. Classy stuff this from the Empire Devendra Nath Subedi. And I have with me Ayush. A very good afternoon, Ayush. A very good afternoon, Sachin. Nepal desperately needs a wicket from here because it's a brilliant partnership going on between Levitt and Engelbred. Dipendra Singh Aidi got into the attack. Mind you, this is the last over of the bar, please. The Dutch are off to a flyer start, Sachin, to be honest. Absolutely. 55 or 5 and 2, they'll certainly take it. They were aggressive against Lalit. Karan and Sompal Kami. The only wicket to fall was that of Max O'Dowd. Karan Kisi got that wicket, that breakthrough for Nepal. But since then, Michael Levitt <coughs> has been really, very aggressive. Some issues with the side screen. Fortunately solved. And the Bindasing ID now operating from the T-Wicket end. 
scored 48 yesterday. At one point of time, it was Nepal's sole hope in Nepal's cause of chasing that score of 206 runs. Comes round the wicket. Beautiful delivery. Coming round the wicket, creating that angle with the arm, quicker through the air. Brilliant delivery to Levitt. Levitt is playing a gem of an innings in his debut today. If he gets that half century, Sachin, he would be the second player to make half century in T20I debut. So this could be a good opportunity for Michael Levitt. He's batting so well, he's looking aggressive. So four dot deliveries by Dipendra Singh Idea against a well set Levitt. Again, five dot deliveries. Yoked him up. In fact, Michael Levitt cannot believe it. He wanted the umpire to call it as wide. Not there though. Just inside the crease and the line belongs to the umpire is what they say. Michael Levitt balling against, batting against Dipendra Singh Aidi. Can he produce a maiden here? Oh, this time a stronger appeal says no and the reason could have been only the ball pitching outside the line of leg stump. His, he cannot believe it, Dipendra Singh Aidi. Maiden over, brilliantly done by the Tiger, six done, 55 for one. So Kushal Malla now operates from the Chobar end. Slow left arm orthodox. Doesn't turn the ball much, Kushal Malla, but he's pretty accurate and gives the ball a lot of flight, a lot of air. Doesn't hesitate in giving the ball with inner flight. And this is the massive appeal. Very good decision again. The ball pitching just outside the line of leg stump and you cannot give that out. And Umpire Durga Subedi has been spot on with his decision making today. Just after the power play over is bringing Kushal Malla into the attack. Now, the previous over of Dipendra Singhari was fruitful. Now, Kushal Malla could just come in and apply that pressure because the power plays are done. You could apply pressure with the batsman. Enough was enough for the Dutch batters because they already considered considered seven dot deliveries in a row and out of nowhere that over from Dipendra Singh ID has brought Nepal back into the match just slightly Michael Levitt now 42 of 26 is well set can he play an innings like Lofty Eaton he single-handedly took the match away from Nepal yesterday well the Dutch side would be definitely hoping Michael Levitt to play innings like a lofty Eaton. Staying out there, it's his debut today. Slow, wide, straight to the fielder. So the spinner is now applying some, some kind of break against the run flow. Falling outside that line of off stump. No, no, no. Only a single this time. So Nepal will not mind this. Because till the fifth over, they were going at 11 and over. The Dutch team. And only two runs conceded so far by Kushal Malla in the first four deliveries. Now, what will be interesting to see is Engelbert's approach to this innings. He comes down the track, was a shorter delivery, flatter delivery. Nepal cannot afford this overthrows. In fact, they decided not to take the second run, but the throw was a bit wild. Straight into the hands of Dipendra Singh Aidi, and that was a brave call, calling against the quick move of Dipendra Singh Aidi. Eventually, no harm done for the Dutch side. This time, just trying to come down the ground. 
tackle that delivery. Just four runs from this over. Seven over done. Netherlands 59 for one. So Dipendra Singh ID coming around the wicket, there's a fielder at deep mid-wicket and deep square leg. They throw the onside, offside easily, just a single. So now Dutch team, now they're looking comfortable and they're looking to consolidate on the start they've got from Michael Levitt, 45 of 30. Well, Ellingberg need to calm his nerves down. He need to stay there in the pitch. Give that supportive innings to Michael Levitt because Michael Levitt is looking fabulous today. He's playing that important knock. They need to build that partnership because they have lost their first wicket. They are rebuilding their innings. And this is what, at the moment, Ellingberg can do. Sachin, just be there, rotate the strike, be at the non-striker's end and give it to Levitt to face the number of deliveries. This was always a threat. Going with the spin, which is gone. And this is one of the biggest sixes you've seen in the series so far. Massive. And that's the 50 for Michael Levitt, the debutant. Only the second player to score a 50 in the debut match itself. And what a fine innings. This has been 51 of 30, 31. He went with the turn. In fact, it was a straighter one from Dipinder Singh ID. He dragged it from outside the line of off stump and smashed this completely. Well, absolutely, just a second player to score half century in his debut. The first one was Ryan Tendaskade, who scored that 50 in debut match against Kenya in Belfast T20 World Cup qualifiers. This time, a brilliant delivery. Not giving any room in offer to Michael Levitt, targeting his bats. He's looking dangerous at the moment. Just yorking him up. Look at that flatter trajectory. Ball staying straight. Another delivery, just targeting the bats. We have seen Michael Levitt struggling against Dipendra Singh. Whenever the ball is balled around his bats, well, that's the end of eight over, Netherlands, 69 for one. Shalmala continuing in from the Chova and the plan has been simple against both the batsmen from Kushal Malla coming slow through the air, offering that room around that offside region because Kushal Malla knows it. The pitch that today the game is being played, the offside boundary is pretty far. Once again coming slow through the air, giving that flight in offer. Well, with this there's a change in commentary box. I'd like to welcome Sanjeev Yalmo. Good afternoon, Sanjeev. Good afternoon, Ayush, and good, good afternoon to our dear wa viewers watching the live telecast of the second match of this Tri Nation series. At the moment, Netherlands. 71 this time, driving. Straight back to the bowler. Well, the ball went with the pace. Kushal Malla just, just managed to keep his hand out there, could not grab the ball. Uh, the big wicket. Michael Levitt, the set man. 
how this drop catch will turn out to be. It was firmly struck. It was a difficult one oh, when the bagging. I think you, you get very you know, in, in less time to know to do reaction in such kind of strokes when the batters play back to the bowler. So he survives at the moment, batting 153. That's a wide ball. Bowled outside the Austin. That was loose from Kushal Malla. Yeah. Well, Kushal Malla coming from the wicket, trying to create that angle. I mean, in a flatter trajectory. But what Kushal can do at the moment is just not offer any Orpish delivery to Michael Levitt because he's so strong through that leg side with his lock sweeps and all. Well, there's some bit of concerns. For Kushal Malla in his hand. Because in the previous over when Dipendra Singh Airi was attempting that run out, he was throwing the ball pretty hard. Kushal Malla could just manage to keep his hand out there. And just after that over, in this over, with the drop catch of Michael Levitt. Struck the ball pretty hard, could just manage to keep his arms there, Kushal Malla. Look at that power, look at the bottom, I'm coming into play. Very less reaction time there for Kushal Malla. From the body language, you can make it down that he was not anticipating that and caught in ball chance. That's, that's the reason the ball got dropped, not being able to hold on to it. Michael Levy batting 153, his innings has been terrific. Just 35 delivers he faced before his half century knock. Well, yeah, he had had a good run in the League 2 matches. Against Nepal, he scored 39. Against Namibia, he scored 57. In the ODI, but what a day it has been for this debutant, Michael Levitt in T20I. Just a second player to score half century for Netherlands in debut. The first one was obviously Ryan Tendeskade, scoring 50 against Kenya. So yes, Kusal is back. Bit of change in the field. Yeah, well spread out field at the moment. Probably trying to stop the boundaries being struck by the batters. This time playing the ball towards the cover region. The ball traveling to the deep point. Cover region and batters are through for a single run. Levitt was trying to go for that second run. That was a good call there by Ellen Breck. Crowd coming in good numbers today. We T20 game, it's always interesting. Once again, the ball was fuller driven. Or oh, was this an opportunity out there? It would be interesting to see in the replay. Was that an opportunity, Sanjeev? Yeah, that will be very interesting to see whether it was in the air for a while. Driven firmly, straight to the fielder. Oh, it was a chance, let me tell you. So another catch, wind up begging here. Catching has been the problem for the Nepalese fielders. A couple of catches dropped so far. This is the second time Michael has been dropped. This time playing the ball up actually. Two was a long origin, the one drop to the fans. Gulshan Jai is the fielder. Just a single. I think he, you know, there was no start from him. That was the reason. Otherwise, it would have been a good catch at the long origin. Well, absolutely. Gulshan could have gone for, for that catch. It's not taking that stride from the boundary. Ah, uh, this over is turning out to be interesting. One drop catch from Kushal Malla. Half chance there for Rohit Kumar Portal and this time, oh, the plan has worked. The plan has worked from Kushal Malla. He was consistently balling around that off stump reason, giving that room in offer. And the big man, Michael Levitt, departs a big wicket. The big big through comes in this over. Super bowling by Kushal Malla this time, sensing, understanding the mentality of the ba batter. The batter was looking to play too many shots this time, pitching the ball outside the awesome that you can see. And easy stomping. So wicket number two goes down. The danger man walks back to the pavilion, but not before he has done his job for his side, let me tell you. Well, good bit of gloves work there by Asif Sikh. That's the end of ninth over. Netherlands 77 for two.
Well, what a brilliant over it has been for Kushal Mala. They were picked up though, very really important wicket for Michael, who was looking very dangerous. Twice you know, he was dropped, but uh, finally, Kushal Mala got, got the better of him this time. Nice to the worry. There you can see the spectators, the Netherlands supporters, they have come. A large number of spectators have turned up here, so that's the. Well, that's the end of ninth over, Netherlands, 77 for two. Now Kushal Burtel coming into ball from the TU end. Now this is a good opportunity for Nepal to bring back that momentum towards themselves. Yeah, they have, they have removed the dangerous batter, Michael. Now it's up to the Nepalese bowlers trying to pick up some more wickets and put it. This time drifting down leg side and swapped it away. Ball traveling to the final leg boundary region for four runs. That was a Loosener from Kushal Burtel drifting down the leg side, easy picking and swapped it away for four runs. Well, the ball was not in control from Kushal Burtel. And shot from Ellen Brett. Well, this I was talking about, Santi. This is a good opportunity for Nepal at the moment to bring back that momentum towards themselves because Ellen Brett is also a new man and has not faced that much of a delivery. The skipper, Scott Edwards, has just come into the crease. So this could be a perfect platform for a Nepali side to bring back that momentum towards themselves. Definitely, they have to pick some more wickets. Let me tell you, you just can't let things go off the, off the hook for them. They have picked up the very important wicket, the man who was looking very dangerous. Now uh, this time once again trying to whip it off his pads, making no connection. So what type of a total do you think uh, will be a chaseable one on this pitch considering the conditions of this pitch when Nepal come out to chasing a target? Well, I don't see much of a difference in the wicket, as Sanjeev, we have seen in the yesterday's game as well. But that side would be definitely eyeing to go over the 200-run mark. Here's the call. But they'll just be happy with the single. Well, they'll be definitely trying to go over the 200 mark to just to create that mental pressure to the chai side ch chasing the target. Because in T20, I, if you always score above that 200 run, you'd have that mental pressure over yourself while you are chasing down. Yeah, you get the psycholo psychological advantage when you put up a total of 200 runs, one batting first. It becomes a bit difficult for the team who comes out and chasing down the, the target. So definitely they are looking forward to 200 plus runs in this match, but definitely our Nepalese bowlers will will well have to try to pick wickets, not to bowl too many loose deliveries, bowl to a tight line length, keep the batter guessing, bring about variety in their bowling. This time, once again, trying to play across the line. This time, the ball pitching on the off stump. So no reaction from the bowler. So I think the things have been pulled back at the moment after the, after the departure of Michael. The way he was batting, and it looked as the Netherlands team would go more than 200 runs, but now things have been pulled back by the Nepalese bowlers, especially after the downfall of Michael. Well, absolutely, Sanjeev. Michael Levitt was looking dangerous. A brilliant plan to dismiss uh, Michael Levitt. Kusal was applying that plan from the first over as well against Michael Levitt, but just keeping the ball away from him. It was tempting him to come down the track and play those short. Ball get, got that turn and a brilliant gloves work there by Asif Sake. Well, crowds coming in number today. They definitely won, won their side to win the T20I. That's a fabulous side. Large oh, spectators falling. This time onto the backward, played it away. Towards the long origin, a couple of bounces, and the ball will find towards the fence for four runs. Another loose number from Kushal this time. Easy picking for the batter. Played it away easily, and which fetched him four runs. Well, the ball was. Pitch shot, look at that body, transfer of weight to the back foot. Just played with that bat, a oh, brilliant shot. Just playing according to the field set. And the drinks has been called.
Asha, end of 10, it's 88 for 2. Welcome back after the drinks break. Pratish GC will start the proceedings. Left arm, medium pace bowler bye bye, from the Chobar end. And there's a change in the commentary box. And we have our colleague, the man from Australia down under, Kevin Patrai. Good morning and welcome back once again to the commentary box. Good day indeed. And the game is evenly poised. Nepal have been able to grab two wickets, 88 after the end of 10 overs. And the danger looking Levit is back in the pavilion. The good news for Nepal. On the other hand, these two batters have to establish a partnership to apply the pressure that they have generated. Pratish Jishi, mind you, has been replaced in place of Abhinash Bohra. So this is his first game in this T20I series. Namibia played magnificently yesterday, defeated Nepal, and Nepal is trying their level best to come back stronger here into international ground in the second game. Definitely Nepal will be looking forward to make up for the deficiencies they showed in yesterday's game. Now Pratish GC has a point to prove here. He is here. Young cricketer. Well sp spread out field at the moment. 89 runs on the board for the Netherlands. More attack. Man on strike at the moment. Engelbridge playing on 19 of 15 deliveries. He has opened his arms, started playing his shot. On that occasion, also, he was looking for that boundary. Sliced the ball late onto the offside just for easy single. Kushel Burthel was in the field protecting that boundary. So, yesterday, what happened with Lofty Eaton was he was easily picking the ballers up. He actually forced Nepali's bowlers to ball according to his plan. So Nepal has to be mindful and take regular wickets if they have to restrict Netherlands. In the meantime, a beautiful shot from Scott Edwards. The captain of Netherlands mashing that ball. No chance whatsoever for the fielder. Ball raced towards the boundary for a four. 
The ball was in the slot and the captain bangs it away. No chance for any fielder to stop the ball. The ball traveled like a tracer bullet towards the long of region four. And there you can see desperate attempt from the fielder at mid off region, but the ball piercing him and the ball crashes to the fence for four runs. Offfielder was way out, so that has helped them to grab an easy single. So at the moment, Nepal are giving away runs, not in boundaries, but singles and doubles are coming very easily for Netherlands. Nepal will be pretty happy the runs are not coming in boundaries, coming in the form of singles. One, one of these two batters will have to cut loose now. And as you said, this time it's a French cut and the ball traveling to the final leg bound origin. He nearly dragged on the ball, but luckily the ball. Just passing Alex Tum in the ball, traveling to the final leg boundary region. You can't, you know, have fielders for such kind of strokes when batters play. You absolutely can't. So with that boundary, it's the end of the over as well. 100 comes up for Netherlands after the end of 11 overs. They are 100 for two. So, hundred for two. Angle Brech and strike. Lalit Rajwansi comes back into the attack. Again, he is repeating the mistake that he'd done in his first fail. Ball again drifting down the leg side. Easy picking. He has to get back to the perfect line that he normally balls. He has been a bit wayward, a bit carried away today in this game. Definitely, he's not bowling according to his strength at the moment. Bowling too many balls down the leg side. And what he has to do is try to pitch the ball towards the off stump. Then bring the ball in that might be the type of balls he should be bowling to the batters and the batters who are looking at the moment to go for some quick runs it becomes worrying this time i played it away reverse sweep and the ball traveling to the tournament bound region for four runs very clever batting there from the dutch batter scott edwards captain he saw the field set he made his mind it was right on the slot to be swept Timed it perfectly, beaten that fielder, no chance whatsoever. Another boundary has been scored in the second delivery, so it's been easy pickings for the Dutch batters at the moment. So, pressure right back on Lady Raj Bumshin. Now, what he will do now as a bowler, you have to have variations in your bowl. There, you can see the large number of spectators who have turned up here watching this game, the second match of this Tri Nations series involving the Netherlands, Nepal and Namibia. The ball losing the first game against Namibia by 20 runs this time. Playing the ball towards the squad like region and the batters are through for a couple of runs. Good running between the wickets. That's what I've been telling you. They have been scoring a boundary in every over and ones and twos have been easily coming. At the moment, Nepal is focusing on protecting those boundaries and in that race, what they have done wrong is they haven't been able to stop those singles and doubles flowing in the regular order. So Captain Rohit Podel has a lot to think about. Yeah, they have to plug the runs which are leaking easily. There you can see once again, batters are through for a couple of runs. The fielder was at the band region. No, another, just help it be another third run as well, owing to, you know, overthrow. Sluggish, absolute sluggish in the field from Nepal. I have been insisting Nepal have to stop the flow of these singles and doubles. Look how wider the gap is on the onside. Kushal Malla had to run all the way from boundary and try to stop those two runs in the race has happened to give the third one as well. So Nepal not 
doing the things that they should be doing right. How was that? How was that? In the meantime, absolute stunner. That was a quick work behind the storm, mind you, from Asif. Let's have a look at that in the replay. How beautiful was that glove work from Asif? Went like lightning into the stumps. Lucky the batter just got in in the neck of time. A great display of wicket keeping there by Asif's sake. He has got that experience of doing the wicket keeping, and it's never easy, mind you, against the spinners. That was a terrific job. Uh, the batter's right foot was winning the crease, so no damage done. It was a beautiful delivery ball, but uh, once again trying to whack it away, but missing it completely. So, after the end of 12 overs, Nepal, Netherlands are 110 for two. Scott Edwards has gone to 20 of 10 deliveries. He hasn't gone for those big shots, but he has played significantly well, converting those ones into twos, applying the pressure into the fielding side and getting that occasional force. Look at that enthusiasm in the crowd. They are pumped. They are here to see Nepal smashing Netherlands. But Netherlands looking very good. 12 over has gone 110 on the board. Kushal Malla continuing with his third over has considered 12 runs and has taken one wicket. So there is a huge responsibility in the spinners to break the partnership now. He has been expensive this time. Playing the ball away towards the third round region. No fielder there. The fielder was wide there. The batters coming back for the second run as well. At the moment, we. What we have seen, the runs are coming fairly easily for the Dutch. Both the batters are in the playing freely, playing the ball in the gaps. They are aiming the places where the fielders are not capped and easily picking up runs and in between hitting and not boundary as well. Let's have a look at that. That was a slower delivery. He took his time, just battle sweep that ball. Rain towards the boundary. Couple of easy pickings. Kushal Malla this time dragged it short, played it into the gap in the onside. The fielder did a valiant job but couldn't stop it. Race towards the boundary. That's what I've been saying. It's been three overs in succession where they have been able to get a boundary in the first three deliveries. Kushal Malla pitching it short this time, inviting for trouble. The batter said thank you very much. Ball race towards the boundary. Rang short ball, plenty of time for the batter to wait for the ball and they whacked it away towards the long region, easy picking boundary. So definitely now the pressure will be on Kushal Malla. He will have to be careful what type of deliveries he should be bowling to the batters at the time when the batters are in four cry. They want to score as many runs as possible. The runs are coming fairly easily. Things are very easy for the batters. So it's very important for the Nepalese bowlers try to you know block the flow of runs. They need to do something differently. After the fall of Michael Levitt's wicket, this partnership is building slowly, quietly, getting those occasional boundaries. And what's happening is the things are not going Nepal's way. Inside is ball race towards the boundary. No chance for Asif to stop that. A thick inside edge ball race towards the boundary. Most of the time in cricket, Sanjeev, we have seen those balls crashing into the stumps. But definitely things are not going Nepal's way at all. Netherlands are looking towards a big target. They are running, racing towards a big target in here. It won't be easy for Nepal, mind you, because Netherlands have got a very strong bowling lineup as well. So the problem with Nepal in this uh, couple of games we have seen, Sanjeev, has been not being able to take wickets in regular intervals. Definitely. That should, should be taken into consideration. And at the moment, the things uh, do not look good for Nepalese ball. A full toss ball this time, whacked it away towards the mid wicket. There is a field dance, so a couple of runs. One second and loosener from that one. Oh, chance to run out. Oh my gosh. They missed it. There was a throw coming from the boundary region. The batters were running. So, luckily, once again, luck is favoring the Dutch batters at the moment.
That was a loose nerve from Kushal Mullah. Lucky that this ball didn't go for the boundary. A great effort by Sandeep Jora in the deep. Look how close that ball was to the stumps. Kushal Mullah was looking to that ball till the very last occasion. He directed, would have been gone by miles. So everything at the moment is going towards Netherlands. Is that a wicket, a great throw? Who else other than the Tiger, the Pendra Singh Airy? What a wonderful piece of fielding. Grass the ball straight into the gloves of Asif and he did the rest. So finally, the wicket has come. Let's have a look at that. They were trying to convert that one into two. Dipendra Singh Airy racing from the boundary, grabbing it with his right hand through straight to Asif. Great effort from Asif, great sensible effort and crashed into the stumps. Was terrific fielding and the wicket goes down here for run out. Wicket number three for Dutch. Scott Edwards gone for 33. Netherlands are one, two, three for three. So finally, the partnership has broken in the form of run out. Nepal won't mind the wicket coming from any way, but they need the fall of the wicket. Pratish Jishi into his second over, gone for 12. Best time playing the ball towards the super cover region for us. And definitely, no matter how the wickets come, the wicket should be coming. That's the only way they can stop the Dutch batters from running away from putting up a big total. These are Nida Manuru is the new batter for the Dutch side. Let's have a look at that replay. Let's have a look at Dipendra Singhari. Look at him. He was running, flying. Ashif was very sensible, very mindful there. Grabbed the balls, hit the stumps right at the neck of the time. The fielder did an amazing job and what a support it was from the keeper. Acrobatic fielding by wicketkeeper Asif as well, resulting in the run this time. Playing, missing, and batters are through for a single run. So, unfortunate dismissal for the Dutch captain and the guy, the Tiger himself. How many times he has proven his importance in the side, not just as a batter and a baller, but a magnificent fielder. He's a fabulous player. He does his job, whether batting, bowling, fielding. He's absolutely brilliant. Let's try running the ball towards the goal. Oh, the ball piercing the field and the ball traveling to the backward point region for four runs. The fielder did everything he could have done on that manner, but the ball was hit with such a precision. Angle bridge there. Let's have a look at that. Played it really late. It was a diving effort to say that, but there was no chance the ball raced towards the boundary. So, despite the fall of the weakest, the runs are flowing smoothly for Netherlands. That was sweetly timed. He just, you know, used the bowler's pace and just angled his bat and played the ball away, beating the fielder a short hutment region and the ball traveling to the fence. The outfield is very quick. The ball travels to the fence once you beat the fielders. So, 129 runs at the moment for Netherlands. Three wickets down. Here is Pratish Jishi. He was balling onto that leg stump, swept it. 
There's protection in there, has to settle for a single. Talking about the outfield here in TU International Cricket Ground. Mind you, it is lightning fast. It is one of those outfields where if the batter times the ball, the ball races towards the boundary in no time. Yeah, balls are coming nicely onto the bat, so I don't think so it will be a problem for the Nepalese batters when they come out chasing whatever target the Dutch will put up after the completion of 20 overs. But they will. Forward here this time, drifting down the leg side, half hearted uphill. It was clearly going down leg side, so there was no question about the W. Easy decision for umpire. The ball was pissed outside the leg stump, hits in pad. And from the angle Pratish is bowling, it's very hard to get the LBW decision unless he is able to move the ball in towards the batter. But uh, the runs are coming, though there hasn't been much of the urgency in making runs, but the uh, Netherlands are easily dealing with one boundary in each over, Why? taking that easy singles. So with that single, that Why? completes over number 14. Netherlands are 131 for three. So 14 overs have been completed, 131 runs on board. Kushal Mullah comes back into the attack with his final over, conceded 25 runs, but has taken that very one important wicket. Nidamanuru just plays that ball with soft hands and easy picking. They are coming back for two, a good running between the wickets. I have been telling you, Nepal is so much concerned about saving okay. those boundaries. During that race, they have considered easy singles and doubles. There was a slow reaction from the fielder as well. That was the reason why the batters could go for the second run as well. Kushan Malla has been a bit expensive, but he has picked up that important wicket. He has gone for some runs as well. Oh, trying to play the shot, missing a completely quicker one this time from Kushal Malla. Normally, Kushal holds onto his bowling action, balls those really slower orthodox deliveries. This time around, it was pushed in the air to see the batter. Easy pickings for the Netherlands batters for a single. Talking about Kushal Malla, what an asset he has been for Nepalese cricket. The left arm batsman, left arm orthodox bowler, has been bowling regularly in the national side in the recent games and his skill of hitting big shots well we all are familiar about it but at the moment nepal needs to focus on their bowling and restrict netherlands under that 170 mark there this should be the thing in the minds of the captain rohit kumar powdell and at the moment the responsibility has been given to kushal malla now this time out of the back we played it away two was long on vision but there's a protection as you said about kushal malla he's one of the finest all-rounders Nepali cricket has produced over the years. At one, one point of time, he was the world record holder. But his record bro got broken. And, the, and let me tell you, records are meant to be broken. His record was broken just yesterday. Till yesterday, he was the guy with the fastest century in T20I under his belt. Well, Lofty Eaton snatched it yesterday. Well, again, played it with really soft hands. The fields spread. So they are taking those singles regularly kushal malla is trying to stop the flow of the runs no boundaries in this over mind you so that's an encouraging factor for nepal so kushal will be bowling the last over of his spell 30 for one so far no boundary yet in this over so far trying to play reverse sweep missing and that's the wide ball drifting down outside the all term trying to play no reverse sweep but no connection white ball that was casual effort from kushal malla it was the last delivery of the over he was 
he was anticipating that the ball batter might come down the track and smash him because there was no boundaries in this over. But, well, Engelbrecht has the other option. This time around, it was on the slot. Hit it on the full. Thank you very much, Sid. Engelbrecht, the ball raced towards the boundary. A big, big, big six. What that was a terrific shot. Short of that ball onto the back and they whacked it away towards the side screen. The ball traveling, traveling over the fence for the maximum for six runs. So after 1,543 for three are Netherlands. So what a shot that was in the last delivery of Kushal Mullah's spell. So Pratish Chishi continuing, that was a quick single. So the non-strikers comes into the strike and they change in the calm box as well. Sanjeev and I will be taking a small break and in the meantime, Sachin and Aish will be joining you. Thank you, Kieran. 144 for three. Netherlands now all set for that magical score of 200. But this is the youngster getting a chance finally. Good slow delivery. Good afternoon, Ayush. A very good afternoon. Sachin, they are off to a flyer start. Netherlands, the last wicket was a brilliant partnership between Engelbreth and the skipper, Scott Edwards, attacking the ballers. From here on, Sachin, what do you reckon the target that Netherlands would be eyeing on? I think anywhere below 210. The Dutch would be very disappointed with themselves. They got that start. Attempting that paddle hit again. No connection whatsoever. And Pratish Chisi has been with the squad for a long, long time now. A promising left-handed hand, left -handed medium pacer. It's not that skiddy. Gets the ball to seam and swing as well. Three singles of the very first three deliveries of Pratish Sisi. He's weighing the pace. Straight to the fielder. Rohit Powell, captain, cuts it off and throws it back. It was a brilliant delivery from Pratish Sisi this time. A slower one. Jesse Prasis taking off that pace. Look at the fielding efforts of the skipper. This sort of fielding efforts around that death overs would definitely increase the momentum of your team. So very good over so far under the circumstances by Pratish Sisi. Goes aerial this time. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Bye. So Balkami cuts it off. They'll take the second run easily. So this was a good delivery by Pratish Sisi. It was a slow delivery. That was a good idea implemented by the youngster Pratish Sisi. He's replaced Avinash Bora today. One thing good that Pratish TC has been doing in this over is such in balling those slower deliveries, focusing on those variations. In G20 cricket, you need those variations. A delicate touch this time. The ball will go all the way to the boundary. So this boundary spoils the over of Pratish TC. Ten runs off it. It's short. Slow delivery as well, waited a long time there, the batter, and opened the face of the bat at the very last moment, and the ball goes all the way to the boundary. And that's the end of the 16th over, 153 for three. That's the batting card so far. Michael Levitt, 54 of 36, 37 of 27 for Engel Rich, who's still there. 33 of 16. Scott Edwards, the captain, is run out by 
the Swift defender saying 80. And Netherlands in a commanding position now, 153 for three. Seven ballers used so far today by Rohit Podil, but he's not introduced himself today. He's been a regular part of Nepal's bowling attack since a few matches, Rohit Podil. Lahit comes back to the attack. He's been expensive, he's not taken wicket as well. Worrying sign for Nepal. Well, absolutely, Lalit has been touch expensive today. Interesting move to bring in Lalit Rasbangsi from the Chova and, and two right-handers are batting at the moment because you see Sachin from the pitch that the match is being played. The leg side boundary is, is on a sort of format. So baller needs, batsman needs to play against the turn. Full toss, straight up. And that has been the kind of day for Lalit. He's bowled some really good deliveries as well, but he's gone for runs. And seven ballers used so far. This was a full toss. Sliced it up. It was miscued. But luckily for the batter, the ball landed in no man's land. Straight back at him. This was hit like a tracer bullet. Straight back past the ball, Lalit, for a boundary. So the runs flowing for Netherlands. Uh, look at that power. Look at the shot coming in, middle of the bat. Lalit had no reaction in time to stop the ball. The safest place to go. Just over the baller head. Dependent Singh ID has been given only two overs. He's not gone for runs. Interesting decision this by Rohit Powdell. I think Dependent Singh ID was troubling the batters as well. Lalit Rasbangsi goes full again. And the batter goes straight again. Good relay throw there to prevent that sure boundary. Not to be this time, only a single. So very well done by the Nepal, ne Nepalese fielder. Well, Nepal need to break this partnership at the moment. This partnership is looking dangerous. They're attacking every ballers because they, the Dutch side know now they need to go over that 200 run mark there. That they would just apply that pressure over the Nepalese side. Slides towards the offside. The ball will be eventually caught by Kushal Burtil. And another couple for Netherlands. So Netherlands with minimum of risk are getting quick runs. In fact, they came back for the third as well. Three, ten runs are already off the first five deliveries. Another expensive over of Ladita Bansi. One ball still to go in his spell. I think he sent the ball back in before touching the rope. So all's well that ends well for Kushal Bhurtel. So final delivery of Lalit's spell results in a single. So 11 runs off this over, 17 gone, 3 down for 164. Well, then three overs to go now. Another match where Lalit has been expensive. Four overs, 42 runs, only eight dot deliveries. He was hammered in the earlier part of his innings by Michael Levitt. And Dependra Singh Ayri was given away only 10 runs. By far the most economical Nepali bowler. And he can bowl those Yorkers as well because Dependra Singh Ayri before that accident. In fact, the injury on his back. He used to bowl medium pieces, the Binder Singh ID. He was very effective with his medium pieces as well, and then he had to convert himself into an off spinner. Almost similar story like that of the great Basanta Rigmi. Again, pitching outside the line of off stump. The third appeal in the similar fashion by the Binder Singh ID in his spell. Well, this is a good move by Rohit Kumar Pradel, bringing in the Singh ID from the TU end, because the batsman need 
with the turn if batsman try to play in that mid wicket reason in the leg side the boundary is in the longer side so this is could be the wicket taking over so i guess okay. dipender singh airi the plan was simply to bring dipender singh airi from the tu and sachin so 166 for 3 now netherlands well and truly in course of scoring that magical 200 mark the sound of the bat oh this is an appeal but i think the ball had pitched Right on the track after the ball stuck the bat. The crowd was excited though. The sound of the bat was very crisp. Yeah, the ball did hit the ground before getting into the hands of Dipendra Singh. It is swept. But this time Lalit will stop the ball and prevent it from going all the way to the boundary. That effort from Dipendra Singh Airi was a bit like the goalkeeper preventing the ball from being a goal. Such athletic player Dipendra Singh Airi. Tremendous over already this by Dipendra Singh Airi. Only three runs given away from five deliveries. This is gold. This is brilliant bowling by Nepal all-rounder. Only three runs. What an over this by Dipendra Singh Airi. 18 gone, 167 for three. So, Engelbrecht batting at 46 of 34, Teza Niramanuru, 18 of 16. So, two more overs to go, and Netherlands got that dent because of the last over of the Pender Singh ID. Only three runs off his, over, of the, of his third over. Already a wonderful spell by the Pender Singh ID. Three overs, one maiden, 13 runs, and he is bowling at an economy rate of only 4.33. Apart from him, every other bowler has leaked runs. Pratis CC, 29 runs in his three overs, 11 of his one of Kushal Burtil. Kushal Malla has been expensive despite taking that wicket. 37 runs given away in his four overs. 42 given by Nepal's prime spinner, Lalit Rajbangsi. It's been another day where Nepal have struggled with the ball. Hammered it down the ground only for a single. No Dutch can take those chances, they can just go after Kerr and Casey in this over because they have got that opportunity. Both the batsmen have got that license because they have wickets in hand in T20 cricket. If you just have two overs left, you try to go over each and every ball. Because does Dutch side would be cursing themselves if, if they could not reach up to the 200 run mark, such in with the start that they have got today. Cannot agree more, Ayush, because they still have 11 more deliveries to go. Run making has been difficult and this will certainly help their cause. Lucky for the Dutch team, inside edge. And boundaries like these can break the sackles. Nothing wrong here done by Karan Kesey. Absolutely fortuitous. Well, luck favoring the Dutch side at the moment. They're getting runs in regular success and this partnership is looking dangerous this over look at the stance from Tiramanu he's just standing over that off stump just to make room for himself to go over that mid wicket reason he knows that there is a sort of boundary in the leg side for him missed it completely missed it a dot delivery priceless for Nepal well, outside the line of off stump, he actually went for power instead of just timing the ball. The width was there. I think that's a lucky escape for Karan as well. I was talking about the plan from Ida Manu. Naru is clear out there because the stance that he's taking at the moment in the middle, and leg stump, because he knows that Karan Casey would be balling around that outside off stump reason because Karan knows that there's a boundary in the certain side and the leg side. So he's just trying to play with the baller's mind. 
I think this is the right way to go. This is what he should have done in the previous delivery as well. Didn't try to overhit it or slog it. All he did was get to the pitch of the delivery and time the ball well. Didn't overhit it inside out. And there was boundary written all over it. What a brilliant shot this time. He knew that Karan would be just targeting around that off stump reason. He was prepared for that. Just playing that mental game with Karan Casey at the moment. Fans enjoying a sunny day. A promising match here in Nepal taking on Namibia. N Nepal taking on Netherlands. They took on Namibia yesterday. Good balling this by Karan Kisi. It was a lower full toss. Tijan Nidamonuru could not connect it at all. That was a good call by Enderbert as well. Good running between the wickets. They know that they need runs in every delivery is now. This partnership is getting interesting. Who would ball the last over? Sachin, what do you see from here? It's a tough call for Rohit Powell. He has not bowled a single over today. He's been one of those ballers who's been in form. Took two wickets yesterday as well. Brilliant Yorker, in fact, an appeal. No connection with the bat. Empire says no, but good over this by Karan Kesi under the circum circumstances. 19 gone, 177 for three. Well, then the last over comes up. I think this is a good call by Rohit Powell to bring Devinder Singh Aidi to bowl the last over. He loves bowling in the... Yeah. De Devinder Singh Aidi, he loves bowling in the end overs as well. He can bowl those quick firing Yorkers. He's got that flatter trajectory and the pace that he bowls is over, Sachin. Do not let batsmen settle down there. This has been so good move by Rohit Kumar Powell that I was talking in the previous over as well, bringing in Dipendra Singh Aidi from the TU end. Sweeps it. He's a fielder at square leg, only a single. So Dipendra Singh Aidi's good run with the ball has survived so far. He's been the most economical baller so far for Nepal. 3.2 overs, 15 runs. Hasn't taken a wicket, but he has bowled that magical maiden over. And that's when Nepal got the momentum back only slightly. Well, just look at that delivery. Sachin from Dipendra Singh Aidi just targeting the block holes out there. He has got that pace in his bowling. Loves to offer that pace in his bowling. Comes with a flatter trajectory. Does not give any room for the batsmen to just free their arms. Well, it, is, it was an interesting move to bring in your spinners. End over. Taken on the full this time. Still not being able to collect the boundary. Keeper is the call. Only a single. The crowd getting behind Dipendra Singh Aidi now. And Engelbrecht now batting at 48. This is an opportunity for him to get to his 50. He'll be the second batter for his team to get to his 50 if he does so. Comes down the track. Brilliant length by Devendra Singh Aidi. So he will not get to his 50 unless there is a wide delivery or an extra ball by Devendra Singh Aidi. Only a ball left, 183 for three. I think Nepal have come back really, really well after being hammered by Netherlands in the first 10 overs. Remember, Netherlands were 100 for, for two at the end of 10, the 10th over. And Nepal have given away only 83 runs so far in the remaining 10. This time he gets underneath it. But won't be a boundary as well. They've come back for the second run and an easy run out. 
So the last ball produces a wicket for Nepal. And Netherlands could only manage 184 runs after the end of their 20th over. I use this word only because at one point of time, they were looking to go fairly over 200. And this was the final wicket to have fallen. There was no chance. This was only suicidal run. And all Asif needed to do was collect it with his gloves and dislodge the stumps, which, is, which he did easily. And Devinder Singh ID ends his spell in style. Four overs, one maiden, 20 runs. And he is the reason why Netherlands were bundled out for 183. In fact, they lost only four wickets, but the way Netherlands were going at one point of time, 200 was on the cards. And I think Nepal would be pretty happy with their performance with the ball, especially in the later half of their innings. So that's the target for Nepal, 185. We'll take a short break and we'll come back with the highlights. Boundary. So day two of the This Home 500 Presents Triangular Series, Nepal, Namibia, Canada battling it out. It's Netherlands taking on the home team Nepal today. They've batted their quota of 20 overs and they've managed 184 runs. So now let's have a look at the DHI force. Plenty boundaries of boundaries brought to you for the by Dutch batting DHI. batters in this innings. Boundaries brought to you by DHI. Karan Kisi started off really well. He took that wicket off Max O'Dowd. But then Nepali bowlers kept leaking runs. Ladit Rajbansi, he was fairly expensive in the first and the second spell as well. And Michael Levitt, after that dismissal of Mike, uh, Max O'Dowd, was really aggressive against the Nepali bowlers. And the runs came in really easily. 
Michael Levitt was going big and he got those boundaries with regular intervals as well and Nepali bowlers were made to get on the back foot right from the start. Some innovations as well, especially against Lalit Narayan Raz Bangsi. He suffered today on the, on the second match. He was rested yesterday, he came back today, but the runs kept on coming. But this GC also got an opportunity today, but he also leaked runs, and this was a very, very dedicated touch to the, to the boundary. This again was hammered in the second spell of Lalit Raz Bangsi. Some lucky boundaries as well. This was not one of them. This was very, very intentional inside out towards the offside. Plenty of boundaries for Netherlands and they've got to 184. Now there were plenty of sixes scored as well. So let's have a look at Red Bull energetic sixes. Inside out, this was the first one. Lalit Rasbansi bowled the second over and he was treated in that manner by Levitt, Michael Levitt. Thank you, success to his name. This time, came down the track again, inside out. In fact, that was the previous shot as well, and they used the long handle. The Dutch batters, this was, I think, bigger than what Sumpal Kamish struck yesterday. Straight back, and past the side screens. Brought to you by so those were Red Bull. Energetic sixes. So the Netherlands team, they managed 184. I think they would be a touch disappointed because they could not capitalize on the start they got, especially because of that innings from Michael Levitt, 54 of 36, 49 of 38 deliveries for Engelbrecht, 33 of 16. Captain Edwards was there and he was in the mood, but he was dismissed by Devendra Singh ID. It was a run out. Sandeep Zora then dismissed Nida Manuru of the very last delivery of the innings. So four wickets fell down. Let's have a look at the Red Bull wickets. Wickets brought to you by Red Bull. The first to go was Max Oudout. It was wide. He invited Max Oudout to play that short current Casey. It was an easy catch eventually for Devendra Singh ID. This was a wide delivery, stumped. Levitt dismissed in that fashion after getting to his 50 and two runouts to follow. You do not risk it with Dipendra Singh ID. He is very sharp and very quick as well. And this was off the very last delivery of the innings. Suicidal running really. And that was the fourth wicket to have fallen. So 184 is what Netherlands managed. Defender Singh ID, the pick up the ballers easily despite not picking up any wickets because four overs, 20 runs he gave, along with one made and five the economic rate for him, which was the best for the Nepali by a Nepali baller. Everybody else going for runs. Karan Kesi and Kushal Malla, the two wicket takers, and the remaining two were runouts. So 184 for four, 13 extras ball by the Nepali ballers. And at the end of the 20 overs, 184 for 4 is what Netherlands could manage. So when Nepal, when they could come out, come out to bat second, the target they need to chase will be 184. Will not be much difficult. They'll, they'll have to score 185 to chase it from here. And when we come back after the short break, it will be Nepal's chase.
So the second match of the Disown 500 presents Tri-Series, Nepal, Nami, uh, Nepal, Netherlands now battling it out today. This is the second innings. Nepal will have to chase 184 posted by Netherlands today. Netherlands at one point of time were looking to threaten to go over that score of 200, but Nepal came back with the ball and they'll have to score 185 to win it from here. They got to a score of 185 yesterday, so that's exactly what Nepal has to repeat to win this game fr from here. And Netherlands, meanwhile, they have runs on the board. They can defend this, but what they will need is wickets first up. With me in the commentary box is Kiran. Very good afternoon, Kiran. Good afternoon, Sachin. So, at one time, Netherlands were looking really threatening, but thanks to that spell from Dipendra Singh Airi, that changed the momentum of game. So target is pretty much achievable for Nepal because they chased that score yesterday. 185 was the score that Nepal made. So that's all they need to do today. The opening pair, Asif Saik and Kushal Burtel are out in the middle. Mind you, Kushal was LBW out in the very first delivery yesterday, but he would like to capitalize on this pitch because this pitch looks fantastic for batting. Vivian Kingma will start the proceedings for the Dutch. Playing away from his body, Kushal Bhutil. We all know how capable he is with the bat, especially proved his metal in the Final match of CWC for Nepal, where he scored a 50 against the same opponent. The Netherlands side, but nobody apart from him went on to score big in Nepal, were bundled out, and then were defeated by Netherlands comprehensively by eight wickets. So, Kushal Mulla will be aiming to get off the mark first because he hasn't scored in this tri series. Inside is straight away, he has to be cautious in first few deliveries because King Ma has got that knack of getting that bounce off the pitch. A tall guy, high arm action. So Kushal has to be really watchful, get that first run on the board and then go about the business. And Kushal Bhutte likes playing his shots. He's not somebody who would restrict himself if there's a shot to be, if there's a ball to be hit. I'm sure he'll go after it. Nepal's batting lineup yesterday. The only problem was nobody could convert it big because Rohit Pordel got that start. Rohit Pordel scored 42 of 24 yesterday, was dismissed right after he was set. 32 for Kushal Malla, 48 for Dipendra Singh Aidi, who was dismissed as the ninth wicket. And that's how Nepal lost their last hopes. So on the other hand, King Ma will be looking to start from where he left in that Cricket World Cup Division 2 game against Nepal. He bowled beautifully, mind you, in that game. Beautiful ball outside the off stump, hint of movement, got that outside edge. And the nightmare in the tournament for Kushal Burtel continues. He just opened the face of the bat, just teased the ball. And the ball went in safe pair of hands of the keeper. I was telling King Ma will be very crucial. But Nepal lost their wicket yet again without opening the score. Kushal Burtel yet again going to the pavilion for a duck. I don't blame Kushal Burtel at all because this was too good of a delivery. He knows it. Tremendous delivery this by King Ma. And duck again for Kushal Burtel this time of the fourth delivery of the innings. And off to a very good start at Netherlands. So Rohit Portal is the new man in. He's getting that movement. A king man not happy with the empire, but I think the ball had gone outside the 
line and rightly called wide. Rohit Bordel scored 42 yesterday and he'll have to score more here if he wants his team to surpass that target set by Netherlands. So what a start already this for Kingma and Netherlands. Absolutely, there's no doubt about it. So the misery of run continues for Kushal Burtel. Yet another dock, but leaving that behind, Nepal has to bat sensibly here. Just score the ones and twos. And Sachin, mind you, when Netherlands were batting, the conversion of ones into twos and hitting the gap, getting those runs, that should Nepal be doing, especially to build up the partnership earlier in the innings. Absolutely, and Kingma, meanwhile, he likes running in hard. He likes hitting the deck hard. He's a hit the deck baller, and he's getting that away movement. Now, what the Nepalese batter should be doing is even if they slash at, at wide deliveries, they have to slash it hard. Again, a beautiful delivery. It is pissed off just outside the line of up stump, and the ball moved away further from the right hander. A very successful over first up for Netherlands, one for one after one. So, very good start for the visitors. They've got Nepal onto the back foot straight away, just like yesterday. Netherlands got Kushal Burtil off the very first delivery. And today, off the fourth delivery, Dutton has been introduced by Captain Edwards. And finally finds the gap. Asif Sheikh this time through the fielders, but the ball didn't have enough to go all the way to the boundary. Over his delivery, he took his time, just opened the face of the bat, played it with really soft hands, using the pace of the bowler. Easy picking for a single. That's what Nepal need to do, even though they are not getting the boundaries. They have to look for runs, those singles and doubles. Get the scoreboard ticking. That will release the pressure of run rate as well. Building the partnership now is the first challenge for Nepal. They're hitting the length beautifully, the Dutch ballers. The opening, opening baller. He made sure that Kushal Malla plays at it because the ball was pitched just outside the line of our stump and just at the end, just at the latest of moments, the ball kissed the edge of the bat and that's how Kushal Burtel was dismissed. Yeah, in the first over, if you notice, Sachin, what Kingma was doing was balling high arm action, releasing the ball in the seam, and the pitch was doing the rest. That's how Kushal Mala was trapped with that out swinging delivery from Kingma. And Cockton, on the other way, is hitting the deck very hard, making it harder for the batters to find that gap. Vander Cockton now. He also has had Nepalese batters. On the back foot, Asif Sheikh managed to score a 50 in the League 2 matches, but he's not been in top notch. Wide delivery. Van der Gokten trying to bang in short. Could not get the line right. Yeah, balled way outside the off stump. Asif was. Opening the face of the bat, just trying to go for that shot because it was way outside the off stump. The wide arms of umpires goes. So Nepal's scoreboard is ticking. If not from the bat, from the extras. Up is Lee. Very good thinking by Asif Sheikh. The pressure was mounting on him and his team. It was a touch fuller this time by Van der Gokten. And all Asif Sheikh, need, Sheikh needed to do was get over that infield, which he did it in style. Just over. And first boundary for Nepal. So the beauty of that shot was he was not trying to do 
anything fancy. Just open the face of the bat, just using the pace, clear the infield ball, race towards the boundary. Very good comeback. Van der Kuchten, a wonderful comeback after being hit for a four. And again, he's corrected his line. If he can bowl at that channel just outside the line of up stump, maybe fourth or fifth stump, and then make the batters play from there, keeping the length at the good length area, I think this will be a difficult Dutch opening bowling lineup to face for the Nepali batters. It will definitely be a test. And uh, one interesting thing, Sachin, that I observed is in the meantime, we'll talk about that. The ball's in the air, slashed it hard, running towards the boundary. Up she goes, another boundary. Ashif Sikh was going for that shot. He went for it, didn't time it the way he would have liked to. Top is, the ball flew, was in the air forever. Lucky for him, just clear the infield, race towards the boundary. Went after it, Asif Sheikh. He in fact, followed the ball really well, but he was in two minds whether to go for that dive or not. But eventually, a boundary for Nepal. Two overs gone, 12 for one. down the track again he likes playing that shot through it portal oh this was a very very risky single Rohit portal eventually had to put in a dive let's have a look in the replay it was a definite chance was he home oh would have been touch and go would have been touch and go and lucky nepal skipper there straight off the hand of the fielder as well it was direct in his hand a very gutsy run from Nepal, but uh, personally, I believe Rohit doesn't need to attack like that, especially to Kingma, because he has got that variation. He is a very mindful bowler, mind you, because Asif, on the other hand, is opening up. He's playing his shots, so Rohit just need to be there supporting his partner. Elegantly played. This time, a much, much safer single for this duo. Nepal already on the back foot. They're chasing 184, but the Nepalese batters would be confident that if they can manage to s get to somewhere around 80 to 90 runs in the first 10 overs without losing many wickets, I think they'll be in the match. Even against Namibia, at one point of time, Nepal did come back into the match before Dipendra Singh Airi was dismissed because Dipendra Singh Airi, along with Karan Kesi, uh, could have made the difference all oh, beaten he wanted to go for that drive Rohit portal how many times in t20i's and cricket world cup division 2 we have seen king ma deceiving the batter swing and a miss has been the story in his bowling in most of the occasion probably one of the most confident pace bowlers we have seen so far in this tournament and in the entire season, Sachin. Couldn't agree more. He's very spot on with his length. Very accurate, not very pacey, but he can vary his length as well and he can generate the, the movement out of the track. Vivian Kingma. That's been the strength of his bowling so far, right on the money, hitting the deck, getting that movement off the pitch. One beautiful thing that I noticed in Kingma is he balls that seam up deliveries. That ball goes beautifully off the seam, hits the pitch, does the movement, and that's where most of the batters have struggled so far. So Asif Sekh will be facing Kingma. <laughs> Ball had no bounce at all in that occasion. Wanted to slug it towards the onside. Asif Sheikh. So Nepal, they've had a cautious start, especially because of that initial wicket of Kushal Burtil. And he would be very disappointed, but 
I think to his defense, that was a very, very good delivery by the same baller, Vivian Kingma. Kingma producing King Stuffs. The thing for a single, not there. Three gone, 16 for one. Well then, 16 for one. Crowd made to remain silent so far. A couple of boundaries scored by Asif Sheikh. So, Michael Levitt, the guy who did the trick with the bat, has come to ball, drifting towards the leg. That ball was in the air, mind you. Flicked it off his pads, was in the air. The fielder couldn't grab it, ball raced towards the boundary. Poor, nevertheless, for Nepal, but a risky one. I think this was calculated risk. Just over the tall man, Max out. Just missed it by a whisker. Just over him. Only by an inch. Another boundary for Asif Sheikh. Correction of the length this time towards the offside. I think Michael Levitt. We'll be looking to take this wicket, this important wicket of Asif Sheikh. And mind you, Nepal can bat really, really deep, Kiran. Because they've had Lalit Ras Bangsi in in place of Bibek Yadav today. But despite losing Bibek Yadav from the playing 11, Nepal still have plenty of batters to follow. Dependent saying idea to come, Sandeep Zora. Oh, he's gone with his shot up in the air. Will it clear? Yes, it does. The first six for Nepal. And breaking the shackles here now, Asif Sheikh. Asif Sheikh goes for his business, mashes that ball over the boundary line for a beautiful looking six. But mind you, that ball didn't travel much. It just cleared that boundary. That will give him a lot of confidence. Asif Sheikh said, if you guys can do it, I can do it better. And he is doing it in style. Now Michael Levitt put into pressure. Considered a boundary in the very first delivery. Six of the third. What do we have here? Very delicately played this time. It's not only about hitting when it comes to Asif Sheikh. This time he realized that the third man fielder was just a touch square. He played it really fine towards his left. And another boundary for Nepal and Asif Sheikh. A perfectly executed square cut shot there from Asif Sheikh. If the youngsters are watching, was the replay again and again because that's how you should be playing the square cut really all buff. the way. Cut it very late down the ground, racing towards the boundary. An absolute pleasant view for everyone. Yes, Papa. Now, what overs like this will do to Nepal is it will give Nepal enough time to play around with 26 runs of 13 balls for Asif Sheikh has looked much more confident today only scored six yesterday and Rohit Podil meanwhile I think the Nepali side they'll have to decide who stays there will anchor the innings and who is going to go after the bowlers Probably pass. defended only for a single in fact for a dot delivery four was gone 30 for one
So, on to the fifth over now. 30 for one. I don't think Nepal would be very disappointed with that start. Would have been better if Kushal Bhutel would have been there. Not to be. He lost his wicket in the fourth, fourth ball of the very first over he's faced. And it was the guy in the screen, Kingma, who did the job for Netherlands. And if I were uh, from Nepalese side, I wouldn't mind the tactics of Netherlands captain because he has given ball to Kingma for his third over in a row. So that means towards the death, he will have only one over to ball. So if Nepali batters can go through with his over, they can target all the bowlers and do the business because he has been by far the pick of the bowlers for Netherlands throughout their outing in Nepal. Easily, and he's looked in good touch as well. He's very accurate. He can sometimes exceed the speed of 140 kilometers per hour. He's very pacey, and the captain knows, Edwards knows that Nepalese batters do not enjoy playing, playing against pace, but this time he does, Rohit Podil. He waited for it. Just the length of the delivery really, really well. And slapped it for a boundary. Rohit must have heard you, Sachin. He was like, don't give me that. We can actually hit boundaries of the Pacers. Up she goes, dancing down the ground. Smashed it past that fielder in. Made on reason a beautiful four. Giving answers to your question, Sachin. You only talk about commentators' curse. You'll also have to talk about commentators' blessings. Rohit comes down the track again and he goes against the bowler again. Consecutive boundary is this for Rohit Podil. Making the use of the fielding restrictions completely. Rohit Podil is on song. A beautifully timed shot that again coming down the wicket, not letting King Ma settle down. That ball was drifting towards leg, made room on the offside, bisected it. Beautifully between that cover and mid off reason, a magnificent four. Mind you, Rohit said, I will be joining you, Asif. Both are on song here at the moment. Two balls, two boundaries. Counter attacking Kingma. Slow delivery. Very, very well directed, slow delivery, but still they managed to pick the single. So good over already. And this counter attack by Rohit came out of nowhere. The coaches coach and assistant coach they're watching very carefully observing the game enjoying the batting of these two batters at the moment after the sluggish start that Nepal got after Kingba produced that beauty to get rid of Kushal Burtel the story has gone one way Nepal are capitalizing a beautifully processed inning Kingma the dangerous looking bowler is under pressure all of a sudden into his third over his length now being too predictable and that's what Rohit Powdell made use of King Mal loves bowling at that good length area almost every time he is a PC customer and he gets to a speed of over 140 at times as well he comes from a family with a lot of cricketing history Vivian Kingma. In the meantime, Monty Desai and Bashant Shahi very closely observing the game. The coach and the assistant coach for Nepal observing every delivery. In the meantime, King Ma is here against Rohit Podel. Hit it in the air. That ball has traveled all the way towards the leg side for a big, big, big six. Rohit is getting the better of King Ma here into international. Cricket ground in the second T20I. A wonderful hit this. Looked very classy playing that flick short. He picked this out off his pads and look where the ball has gone. This is a massive six. I bet this would, this would have been six in any, any ground in this world. Wonderful hit this. Elegance more than power. And Rohit Powdell carrying on from that innings where he scored 42 was out yesterday but today he's looked really good the challenge for him is to stay there for as long as he can and well defended now 16 runs comes of this fifth over 46 for one nepal
So 14 runs being conceded by Vivian Kingma. Very unlike Vivian Kingma on that over. Rohit Baudel easily got better of him as soon as he danced down the wicket. Kingma lost his rhythm completely. Look at this partnership looking already dangerous. 46 runs. The opening stand because Kusil Vrutel went without scoring. So Levitt continuing. Gotten, mind you, continuing as a single there. So these two batters are looking to open the arms and play freely. In the meantime, there are chains in the com box. Shachin has gone for a break, and in comes Ayush with me. Welcome, Ayush. Well, thank you, Kiran. A brilliant partnership going in the moment between the skipper Rohit Kumar Powdell and Asif Sekh. They are already off to 47 runs in just 27 deliveries. They need to rebuild this innings. They need to take that momentum forward, keeping in required run rate in mind, Kiran. Absolutely. They don't need to worry about that required rest very much because at the moment how these two batters are going, runs are coming very easily. But as I've already emphasized so many occasions, go for those ones and singles. You will get those occasional boundaries. And in the sort of mindset Rohit and Asif are looking, I don't think they are going to hold back, Ayush. Well, absolutely. For the experience that Gurton has in his pocket, he's already been part of Hobart Hurricanes, New South Wales under-19 team as well. And this time, trying to come down the pitch. A brilliant presence of mind there by Gurton. He saw Rohit Kumar Powell coming down the track, made his lane to a shorter length delivery, not offering any room to Rohit to play his arms. And Gurton is a big man for the Netherlands, Kiran, because he has got that experience. He's born in Sydney, he's played for New South Wales, Hobart Hurricanes, experience in his pocket, and the skipper would definitely be looking for Gugden to break this partnership at the moment. No wonder why he hits the deck hard, because in Australia, most of the beaches, they favor the pace bowlers when they hit the deck hard. And Gugden, as an example, we can see that ball's in the air. Leading A's, mind you, a very clever balling. Uberfist this time around. Ashik didn't look comfortable at all. Leading lay as lucky that dropped in no man's land. Easy single. So he will be happy staying in the non strikers end against Gokhtan. Well, absolutely. Gokhtan has got that pace to just bring the ball back in to Asif Singh. We have seen Asif Singh being struggling so much with the ball nipping back in towards him. And this is a good start, Kiran, to be honest, for Nepal. The way Rohit Kumar Pord and Asif Singh had. Taken this party all played with soft hand, but there's a fielder out there. Fine leg reason. So 50 up for Nepal in just 31 deliveries. What a wonderful partnership it's been between Asif Sake and Rohit Podal. They look very calm and composed despite those leading aces and stop the shot that they have played. Shows their class, shows their confidence. Now Asif Saik will be on strike against Gotten. Just played with soft hands. A good over. A good power play for Nepal. That's the end of the first power play. Nepal 51 for the loss of one wicket. Well, can you recognize this face, Kiran Gary Kirsten out there? His name we have heard from our childhood. He is not just a player, he is an emotion. The South Af African left-handed opening batter. A master class we have seen in so many occasions coming from his bat. And we can see a glimpse of his batting style into Netherlands players as well. You know, playing with that straight bat, piercing the gaps. Gary Kirsten, the name is enough, and we are fortunate that we are playing against a team which he has proven in the years. So in the meantime, 
one of the trump card of Netherlands, Van der Merv, comes into attack. He has got a bag full of experience under his belt. It will be very interesting how Nibli's batters approach him. Well, absolutely too much of experience in the pocket of Van der Merve. Yeah. This time, just swept the ball. The ball is racing towards the boundary and it will go over for Rohit Kumar Podil, not just holding up to Van der Merve. Look at the cheer from the crowd at the moment. Even Gary Kirsten must have loved that shot against Van der Merve with the taunt, playing that shot down the leg side for a four. Played it all the way into the ground. A magnificent shot. Look at that. Very risky, Rohit Podal. He is playing a captain's knock indeed so far. 23 of 16 deliveries. Gary Kirsten must be enjoying batting and is outing in Nepal. Well, absolutely. Gary Kirsten loves the South. He's in condition South here. Yeah. That? Oh, beautiful delivery by Van der Merve. Completely beaten up Rohit Kumar Powell. Look at the turn. More than ton. Look at the length of that ball. Pitching in middle and leg. Leaving the right hander. Look at that. Just fizzed in middle and leg. Look at the turn. How did that miss the stumps? Excellent, excellent delivery. Bender Murphy is showing why he is an absolute class. Another delivery drifting to us, leg side. Even the Bender Murphy is signaling it was going down the leg. That sort of experience this guy has. Has rescued Netherlands in so many occasions with ball in his hand. He is showing some class of spin balling here into international cricket ground. Absolutely. Another beautiful delivery. Just putting it onto the block hole, not giving any room in offer to Rohit Kumar Porel. Well, that's the end of seventh over. Nepal 56 for one. What a partnership it has been for Asif Sheikh and Rohit Kumar Powell. Slowly they are taking the momentum towards themselves. They know the importance of this partnership. They need to hold their keys down. As the power plays are done, Netherlands, the Dutch side would be coming up with the bowling attack. Aryan Dutt comes in. Well, a good move there by the skipper, Scott Edwards uh, Kiran, because he has brought in. He's off spinner from the TU and the two right-handed batsmen in the crease. The, the leg side boundary is on the longer side. So the, if the batsmen want to play with the turn towards the leg side, it would be an opportunity. So there's two fielder out there. There's deep square leg, deep mid-wicket in protection out there. So good move. It is indeed. And Aryan Dutt has been that one baller who has bothered the batters in his outing in Nepal. He has got knack of taking regular wickets, shot of just sort of good length. This time around, easy picking for a single for Nepal. Talking about Vendermerv, he is just three wickets shy of. He is just one amazing bowler, and then he has played a lot of lot of one day years and T20s. He has already represented Brisbane hit from Australia, so that's the reputation this bowler carries. Well, absolutely too much of experience in his pocket. Captain Scott Edwards would be definitely looking to break this partnership at the moment. Once again, trying to play that sweep shot. There's no fielder out there. The ball will reach towards the boundary. Not a convincing shot, but Rohit Kumar Padel would be happy with the result because he knew there was no fielder out there. Nepal will take it gladly, no matter how the run comes. Let's have that look at the replay. The top airs flying off. Rushing That's towards the boundary, but mind you, that ball was drifting towards leg side. Not a very good delivery from Aryan Dutt. He is not finding his rhythm. So he has to back up his strength and ball in those areas. At the moment, Lovely. it's been free flow of runs for Nepal. So they are getting those occasional boundaries. And like the good thing is they are rotating this right. Well, absolutely. Aryan Dutt, experienced campaigner Aryan Dutt. 
He's got that height as well. He has understood this wicket, Kiran, because you could see Aryanta just bowling with slower through the air, not giving any room in offer for the batsmen to open their arms. He's got that good height. He could generate that bounce from the wicket. Van der Merv has already played 52 T20 internationals and has got 56 wicket under his belt. 39 years old, would you believe, and still serving the nation beautifully. Experience comes with the A's. Aryan Dutt. He has had a good outing when they faced Nepal in the League Two match. So remember Aryan Dutt. His 10 overs of spell just conceded 16 runs and picked up three important wicket. Wow, ball, sorry. He picked up that wicket of Rohit Kumar Podil. So definitely eyeing to take the wicket of the captain in the T20 as well. And Rohit will be very cautious about that. He already knows the fact that he has already been dismissed. Talking about Aryan Dutt, he's just 20 yeah, years old. Look at the age difference. Lovely daddy boy. Gap. So he has, must have, he must have learned a lot from Van der Merv. Just early into his career, played five T20Is, has taken four wickets though. Just guiding the ball towards the third man reason. A good single to end the over. Well, that's the end of eight over. Nepal are 65 for the loss of one wicket. Interesting field set out there. You could just see. So, third man, short fine leg. There's backward point out there. Short cover. Long on, long off. Deep mid wicket. Van der Merwe, the experience Van der Merwe. One interesting thing I used that I found here turn Vandermeer got in that very first yeah. yes. in place. I was telling you how experienced he is. Saw the batter coming down, pushed it outside the off stump. There was no chance for Asif in playing that shot. Easy gather by the keeper. Unsettles the stump. Off goes Asif Sake. Very disappointed. But that's what experience is called. Look at that beautiful ball. Easy picking for the wicket keeper not even closer in the frame was Asif Saik. So the second wicket perishes for Nepal. Ah, oh, beautiful delivery, beautiful length, just tempting Asif Saik to come down the crease. And look at that trademark celebration from Van der Merwe. We have seen this throughout the years, this celebration from Van der Merwe. What a way to break the partnership, a much needed wicket for the Thank Dutch you. side. Around, Asif Saik departs for scoring 34 runs. Nepal 65 for the loss of two wickets. Well, the new man in Kushal Malla, left hand, right hand combination in the crease at the moment. Kushal Malla and Rohit Kumar Podil, well, Kushal needs to hold his nerves. We have seen Kushal got off to a good start in the first T20I against Namibia. They need, once again, they, he needs to be there in the crease, support his captain. The left hand, right hand combination in the crease, left handed. Orthodox fan of Murphy, we have seen Aryan that coming in from the other end. It would be an inter interesting contest, Kiran. It will be indeed because left. Handers love to go after the spinners. It's their natural shot that allows them to free their arms. But it will not be that easy against this quality bowling of Vandermeer. He is bowling an absolute ripper of deliveries here into international cricket ground. The wicket that he has taken of Asif Saik was an absolute treat to watch. He lured him to his shot and got him in the trap. Oh, it's again, nowhere. trying to <laughs> offer that room for himself to play around that awesome reason. Look at the experience, look at the line and length, the wicket that fell off. He understood Asif Saik was just trying to come down. He tempted Asif to just come down the crease and a brilliant piece of gloves work. 
as soon as he saw Asif coming down, he pulled his length. It was almost like a bouncer length that a baseballer would use. Beautiful oh, disguise, Jacob Reed. This time around, a much fuller. Look at the variations he has produced in this over. It's never too easy as a batter to understand the variation if you get that different deliveries in every ball. So Nepal's keeper has to be watchful. Oh, look at that delivery. He was quicker through the air. Just playing with the batsman mind. Rohit Kumar Paul was just him. Tempted to play that sweep shot, a brilliant delivery. You need to give credit to the mind of Vandama with the experience that he has. Look at that full <laughs> length delivery. He saw Rohit was trying to come into the front foot. He premeditated that sweep shot. Excellent execution. And he was teasing Rohit as well. Oh, you want to hit the sweep shot of me? So the last delivery of a very interesting and productive over from Bender Merv is coming your way. Once again, flight at delivery, Rohit trying to go down the mid wicket, could not get that connection. Just a run and a wicket, important wicket for Phantom Over. That's the end of ninth over, Nepal 66 for two. Well, Ayush, I'm loving the contest in here. I'm loving the quality bowling from Bender Merv. Aryan Dutt, on the other hand, is leaking runs. He's gone for nine in his first over. He has to ball, learning from how Bender Merv is bowling from the other end. Kushal Malla, the new batter, if he finds any room whatsoever, he will play his shots. A good move as well, as I was talking in the previous no, no, over. No, no, no. Kiran, just playing the wrong spinner because you know that there is a left-handed batsman in the crease. Aryan Dutt was balling pretty well against both the right-handed batsmen. It would be interesting how Aryan would be balling to Rohit Kumar Pauril. Netherlands has got that luxury of Fender Merv because he not only takes wicket, but what he also does is generates pressure to the batter because they cannot play freely against him, that provides an opportunity for baller on the other end to, to take wickets because they have to continue the run flow. Two is the call. Uh, Roy Kumar Bordel running at the danger end. A bit of slopey work there by the skipper, Scott Edwards. Uh, that was a risky run, Kiran. It was indeed. It's not the first time in this innings that Rohit has called off for that risky run. Previously, also, he was saved by a whisker. This time around, it was close as well. If Edwards would have been a just a tack more quicker in there, the wicket might have fallen. It might have been mighty close. Look, Arin that is not very happy with that effort at all. Once again, some bit of concern for the skipper. So a diving effort in the first power play as well. 116 runs required with eight wickets in hand. Just 10 throwing four overs left. Now, this partnership needs to move forward because you know Rohit Kumar Porel is the set man out there. Kushal Malla is now starting to take some time. Otherwise, we have seen a different Kushal Malla. We saw a different Kushal Malla in the first T20i as well. More than aggressive, he was playing according to the situation. Look at the diving effort from this skipper. Uh, drifting towards the leg again he's pulling much of the deliveries into the leg stump today I don't know why he's uh, applying that tactic maybe trying to cram the batter for the room in the in that race he has pulled way towards the leg side and batsmen have been able to take easy singles and double of him because he has already considered four runs in th three deliveries in this over as well well absolutely Kieran. I guess the plan is simple they have kept in the short fine leg inside the 30 yard circle just tempting Roy to play that Sweep around that reason. I've seen a similar kind of delivery in the previous over of Aryan Dutt. A bit of luck was there for Rohit. Got that edge. So I guess the plan is clear from Aryan Dutt to just to target that leg stump reason or the pads and tempt Rohit to just play that shot. 
through the fine leg if there's a fielder out there. And another thing is with the way the Dutch bowlers are bowling, they have done a lot of homework against these batters of Nepal because they are coming with a plan and they are executing these plans beautifully. They are not offering any room, especially the spinners bowling in very yeah. tight line. R if we see how they are bowling to uh, Rohit Baudel, especially Aryan Dutt is he's cramping him for the room, bowling <laughs> down the leg side. This time he goes towards the offside, pays the prize, the ball flew, went wild over the boundary for a magnificent six. That's what I was talking about. Don't offer those width against a set Rohit Podel because you will be punished and you will be punished severely. Well, look at that shot from Rohit Kumar Podel. The ball soaring into the stands with that colossal six. Oh, what a shot there by Rohit Kumar Podel. It landed on the roof of that VVIP box. And mind you, that box is mighty away from the boundary line. Let's have a look at that beautiful, down on his knees, gets to the line of the ball, smashes it. The way ball went across the orbit, a great six. That will give him a lot of confidence because he was really struggling against Bender Merv. The runs are flowing very easily of RN that already considered 20 in his 1.5 overs with the last delivery to go. The commentating over this time once again playing that unorthodox shot a bit lucky once again Rohit Kumar Paurel the dance from the fan they are enjoying it at every moment out there but it was a risky shot it was indeed Ayush but you know what Lofty Eaton played similar kind of shot yesterday on so many occasions Rohit Paurel said I can do that as well but was mighty close to that fielder Lucky for him, the ball just went crush past that fielder, raced towards the boundary, another four. So a very expensive over. Well, with a brilliant over, the drinks has been called out.
Nepal 81 for 2 after 10 overs. A similar point of time, the Dutch were 88 for 2. This partnership is going to be important for Nepal at the moment. Rohit Kumar Powdell, the skipper, looking in a fine touch today. A surprising move this time. They have replaced their experienced campaigner, Van der Moe. Levitt comes into balling. From the Chovar end was a touch bit of expensive in his first over. Uh, was trying for that sort of delivery. Could not get that bounce that he would have wanted. But this, there's a change in the commentary box. I'd like to welcome Sachin and Sanjeev. Thank you, Ayush. Yeah. Uh, Nepal slowly cruising along, 82 for 2. 42. Exactly the score Rohit Portal scored yesterday and Kushal Mullah with him. Rohit looking in great touch. He's facing Michael Levitt, the 50 scorer, the debutant. Was expensive in his first over with 14 runs conceded. Afternoon, Sanjeev. You still think Nepal in the match? Good afternoon, Sachin, and good afternoon to your viewers. Yeah, very much Nepal, very much in the game. This time on to the backward parallel is away towards a deep square like Richard. Oh, he missed and made a mess of it. And the ball trailing to the fans for four runs. That's a massive error. Levitt not happy with it at all. Aryan Dutt, it was. Realized it immediately after missing that, that ball and allowing it to travel all the way. Should have only been a single. He gave away three bonus runs to Nepal. Now slowly the momentum shifting towards Nepal. Flicked again. Aryan Dutt again. This time he puts his body behind the ball. That was a loose there from the bowler's part. He's picking for Captain Rohit Kumar Paul. He is batting superbly. He is continuing where he left off yesterday. Once again, he's looking good at the moment. And at the moment, Nepal cruising along steadily towards the target. I would say they are galloping at the moment, Sachin. And by the way, we have been doing commentary together after a couple of years, I think. It's a pleasure, Sanjeev. Your energy is contagious. Lovely. Now, how often do you see Kushal Malla only deciding to nudge, nudge around singles? He likes taking some deliveries now up front. It's not the traditional kind of Kushal Malla we've seen who likes using the long handle right from the word go. And Rohit Portal, meanwhile, 47 of 32. Don't be shy, you're on the giant screen. You can call your family and tell, watch me live on TV moment to become a celebrity you have been watched by millions oh chance for a run now misunderstanding between two of the batters but that was a wild throw let me tell you so a bit of messed up here the throw was really wide or else this would have been another wicket for the Netherlands risky double he called for it was sent back by Kushal Malla was a mix-up really a better throw just by an inch would have been the end of Captain Powdell. But lucky that he survives and Kushal Malla will now be facing the music. Yeah! Wide delivery. The crowd cheering every single run now. They know that Nepal is in the hunt. They're always behind the home team. And Kushal Malla facing Livet. This was a wide delivery. So four singles, a boundary and a wide, a good over for Nepal. That was different down leg side loser from the bowler's part with Kumar Portal cap. This time playing up Bishli towards the long on region and the ball traveling over the fans for the maximum six runs. I tell you, you cannot contain Kushal Malla for a long time. He will use his long handle. This was a touch shot by Livet and Kushal Malla lashes onto it. And the ball is deposited out of the ground. 96 for two. Let's have a look at this again in the replay. This is not that short, but Kushal Malla picks it up. His bat flow is such that anything that strikes the middle of the bat will fly all the way. And this is first boundary. In fact, the first six for Kushal Malla. 96 for two.
So that's six, a boundary, 15 runs off that last over of Michael Levitt. Rohit Baudel batting on 49, will get to his 50 in this fashion. In fact, he is now on 49, he was on 48, Rohit Baudel. Can he strike the first 50 for Nepal? And Kushal Mala now slowly getting into the groove and we all know how destructive he can be when he is on song. Struck a massive six in the previous over, the last delivery of the previous over. He likes playing his shot from Bhairava. Practice a lot in his uncle's academy, the legendary Shakti Gochan. We'll be facing the music now. But, but straight into the hands. Against the run of play, Kushal Mallow will have to depart from here. A lucky breakthrough, you can see this for Netherlands. Because the ball was short, wide, it was traveling more with the turn in that delivery. Kushal Mallow slashed at it hard, but could not go over the point fielder. And the momentum has swung again. But who's well, a loosener from trying to cut it away, not being able to keep the ball down. The ball flying and straight to the point region. Another wicket goes down here. Kushal Malla departs at this point of time. There you can see the jubilation. Bowler enjoying the wicket of Kushal Malla, who's looking good in the last over. He smacked a big six over the long region. He was looking good, but it, he lost his wicket. So another wicket goes down here for Nepal. So the new man in is Dipendra Tiger ID, and if you're wondering why there was a massive roar when Kushal Malla was dismissed, the reason is this man on your screen, Dipendra Singh ID. The crowd darling, scored 48, got Nepal to a score of 185 against Namibia yesterday. He will have to build a partnership with his captain now. This is what he does so, so effectively. He takes singles. Convert singles into doubles is very, very quick in between the wickets. And now, finally, Rohit Powell now is on 49 of just 34 balls. It's a wonderful opportunity for the Nepal captain to come in form. And if he can carry on from here and get a big one, I'm sure he'll get Nepal home as well. So with that single, Rohit Powell completes his 50. He scored 42 yesterday. His team needed him. He had to come in and play it big. He scored the 50, but the job is only half done, Captain. You played well, but your team needs you. If your team wants to get to this total, this target of 185, well done, Rohit Powell. Two sixes and six boundaries. What a knock he has played. But let me tell you, as you said, the job is not done onto the backward. Pulled it away, but there's a fielder in backward squad like region just for a single run. But let me tell you, his wicket will be very important. He will have to stay till the end. There's 100 runs comes out for Nepal, losing three wickets. 12th were in progress. 84 now needed, Sanjeev. Very gettable. Massive appeal. Umpire not interested at all. In fact, he's given it. For a moment, I thought Devendra Subhidi had shied away from there. But he's raised his finger and the Dutch team completely jubilant now. Big, big fish they have captured. Skipper Rohit Kumar Powell, who was batting sweep up. There you can see, trying to sweep it away. I think it's a question of LBW. Waited for a while and then, in fact, the ball ballooning up. What is it, LBW or catch out? We have to wait for them passing. He has raised a finger, but what is it, LBW or catch out? It has to be catch out because the only thing that would have saved Rohit Powell from that LBW shout would be the ball striking the gloves. He's certainly caught out behind. And 
after a very, very well compiled 50 Rohit Powdell has to make his walk back. Let's have a look at this in a different angle. Captain has been dismissed. The question is, was he caught behind? Which I believe he was, because Devinder Subhidi immediately turned away from that LBW shout. Let's have a look at this. Try to play his favorite sweep shot, and I think, I think there was something off the gloves of Rohit Podil. The baller was appealing for an LBW, but the keeper was aware enough to understand that there was a chance of Rohit Powdell being caught as well. The ball had, had pitched outside the line of leg stump, so no way that could have been given LBW. And after the ball was caught by the keeper, umpire Devinder Subedi raised his finger immediately. Very important breakthrough the Dutch have got at this point of time. He was batting superbly, hitting boundaries right from ever since he arrived at the crease, he was batting superbly, hitting boundaries at his well. But very important the wicket has gone down, and definitely the Dutch bowlers will now, their moral will go up. New batters and the Zora. Now, be, these two batters will have to put their heads down. It's very important now. They just can't afford too many wickets at this point of time. This time, one of the back played it away. Four runs. How often have you heard Dipendra Singh ID is very, very strong. That area, he likes staying deep inside the crease and cutting everything, even if the ball is not that wide. This time it was. And Vandermover has conceded a boundary off the bat of Dipendra Singh ID. It's very, very strong square of the wicket on both the sides. Fuller run this time. The ball, in fact, came in with this angle. Vandermover, a very experienced cricketer, played for South Africa as well, then shifted his nationality to the Netherlands. Yes, no a very successful bowler as well. He's also played franchise cricket in Nepal. Loves bowling here because of the assistant that speaks to him. He's quite similar with his conditions. So at the moment, oh. Owens down the leg side this time, oh, loosener from the bowler spot, swapped it away for a single run. This is the time the Dutch, they have to pick one more. We can try to put extra pressure on the Nepalese batters because they have got the very important wicket of captain who was looking very good today. He played fantastic knock. Yesterday he made 42 runs. Today he made a fantastic half century when we were thinking that he would go on to prolong his innings. That wasn't to be the case. He got out. Sanjeev, this was the, the, the boundary of the very first ball was the first boundary considered by Vander oh. In his spell today, he has been excellent. 2.5 overs, 12 runs, and he has picked up that important wicket as well. Rushes onto his over. Vandermeerva. Six runs off this over. Now, the responsibility shifts on the shoulders of Dipendra Singh ID, who was there till the very end. Scored 48 yesterday. Very well taken single. Very quick in between the wickets, needless to say, 13 gone, four down for 107. A relaxed Nepali crowd, but the batting pair would not be that relaxed. Dependent Singh Adi and Sandeep Zora, 42 balls to go, and they still have 78 runs to get six wickets in hand. Almost a similar script yesterday. Nepal kept on losing wickets. The conditions look pretty good at the moment. It's flat out now. Sun is shining at its glory. Whatever dew factor, moisture factor, there is no such thing. It's time. Flighted ball driven firmly towards the long of region. The runs are coming fairly easily. And the batters can you know, hit through the line. The balls are not doing any kind of, you know, any kind of something differently where by creating problem for the batters. Batters can just, you know, play through the line. So I think these batters will have to, you know, watch and play carefully, not to play too many fancy shots because pitch is quite easy at the moment to bat on.
tucked on to the own side only for a single. Now this is a tricky situation here for the two batters, the Pender Singh ID and Sandeep Zora, because what happens from now, San, uh, Sanjeev, is there will be a conundrum whether to stay there, build their innings, or to make sure that the run rate, the required run rate, stays under control. Down the track, flat, straight. Straight to the fielder. Devendra Singh already knew that he did not get the middle of the bat. And young kids coming in, future cricketers. It's great to see families coming in and watching cricket, Sandeep, Sanjeev. That's a really good sign. This time, reverse sweeper played it away. Ball traveling to the deep point bound region for four runs. Terrific shot. This time, unleashing his uh, wide range of strokes. Loosener from the bowler spot. Reverse sweeping it in the ball traveling to the bound region for four runs. Right, important four runs coming at a very good point of time. Let me tell you, the required run rate, they have to maintain, they have to make it show. They stay, they maintain the run rate and so they can be in the contention of the game. That's very important. And one more thing is that they just can't afford to lose wickets at this juncture of the game. You can, you can watch the confidence growing in Nepali batters, Sanjeev. Uh, we've been following Nepali cricket for a long, long time now. And the fall of wicket in the previous scenarios made the run run making completely get dry but these batters they're so confident with their skills Sandeep Zora despite having uh, put in in this tricky situation he was not scared to play that reverse hit at all so we'll come back to that 14 gone 115 for 4 So 116 for four now. 36 balls to go. The Manhattan chart. Netherlands managed 184, which we thought was short of that 200 mark, which they deserved uh, because of the start they got in the first 10 overs. They lost the momentum, and the second half of the innings could only produce 84 runs for them. And Nepal, meanwhile, 116 for four. Captain Rohit Pordel was on song before being dismissed in the previous over. So peace introduced by the captain again. Up in the air, just over the fielder there. It was nothing more than a chip shot. Fortunately for Dipendra Singh Aidi, the ball went over the fielder. I think the ball arrived much late than Dipendra Singh Aidi actually anticipated. And it was able to, you know, beat the fielder hitting over the top of his head and the ball traveling to the coverage for a couple of runs so as you said these two batters must be in dilemma what to do go after the bowling or rotate the strike go for ones and twos or go for big boundaries because they have to make sure that they stay they have to maintain the required run this time onto the bat pulled it away and the ball will find the boundary for four good runs short in line plenty of time for the batter to walk onto the back foot and with the horizontal bat pulled it away for four runs the finishing already got out to and exactly the same delivery yesterday. And the idea was right. They wanted to test the short man with some short deliveries. But this time, Devendra Singh ID showing his pulling abilities. His very strong square of the wicket on both the side, sides. And he's got that much, much important boundary for Nepal. That was a terrific pull shot. This time, he made sure that in the role of wrist was, was there to keep the ball down. That was the reason there was no problem whatsoever. The ball traveling to the fence for four runs. That was a terrific shot. So Dipinder Singh Eri, he's finding his groove here. He has found his rhythm. So his innings will be very important. Let me tell you, just 13 deliveries he has faced and he has scored 18 runs. So these two pair now building up at the moment and they're building, they are going into confidence at the moment. As we said, Sanjeev, they need partnerships. 
run making was not a problem for Nepal against Namibia as well, but they kept losing wickets. A partnership was not formed at any point of time, and eventually it was too much for Dipinder Singh Aidi to achieve at the eventual part of the innings. They've lost the first match already. Nepal would not want to lose the second one as well. They want to qualify for the finals. Both the teams, tremendously talented, Netherlands and Namibia, the touring teams. A challenge for the home team. Slashed away, has taken the outside edge, straight to the field at short third. Definitely Nepal will be looking forward to win this game, lost, losing the first game against the Namibian side by 20 runs. That thing must must be very much in the minds of the captain Rohit Padari. You can see the spectators dancing, you know, shouting, cheering on the home side. It's a wonderful sight here at TU Ground. Whenever international matches are being played here, spectators come in large numbers, coming here, witnessing the game. They come along with their family members, cheering on the home side. The attempt of a pull, and immediately the finger raised. There was no length to play that shot, Sandeep Zora. Tried to force it. It was much fuller than he anticipated in Sandeep Zora's attempt of slogging a ball towards the onside, not paying, in, paying him off. In fact, it has taken his wicket. Let's have a look at this. I think that was a pretty easy decision for the umpire. It was on the back foot. The baller knew it straight away. And another massive blow for Nepal. Sandeep Zora departs. Work it goes down here, playing across the line and paying the penalty. You always become vulnerable when you play across the line to a ball which is pitched up. And this time trying to walk it over the mid wicket region, didn't make contact, the ball hitting his pads. And there was no doubt in the minds of the umpire to raise his dreaded finger up. So another work it goes down here for Nepal. Not a very safe option to be watching cricket form from. We still have plenty of spaces inside the field, so there's no reason you should climb the trees that it's very, very unsafe. So everybody do doing so, and who comes in is Sompal Kami, who along with Dipendra Singh Aidi, threatened Namibia. Oh, trying to come back, come down the track, Dipendra Singh Aidi, and who joined me in the com box is Kiran. Very good afternoon, Kiran. Good afternoon, Sachin. And the story what Nepal had yesterday is continuing here as well. After Kushal Mala's wicket, the wicket are falling in cluster. Rohit Paudel and then Sandeep Jorad. Nepal is struggling with partnership. Required run rate has gone past 12. So that is another added pressure for Nepo Nepalese batters. On the other hand, what Netherlands have done good is they have applied the pressure where possible and have been regularly taking wickets. Five wickets already down for Nepal. Aryan Dutt, who was expensive, has been brought back, brought back into the attack because a wicket had just fallen. Sumpal Kami is the fresh batter. They want to apply that pressure. Sumpal Kami did play a cameo yesterday, 26 of 11 deliveries before he was dismissed. He brought Nepal back in the hunt, but could not complete the task. It was the same pair yesterday who actually caught Nepal back in the hunt, straight up in the air. This was a nothing shot, really. Sompal Kami tried to go over that fielder at the circle, inside the circle. This is a very, very soft dismissal, I'm afraid. He dug his own grave on this occasion. Nothing shot. It was not needed as well. A wicket had just fallen. He went for that back foot punch shot in the air. A great diving effort from the fielder. Sompal Kami must be very disappointed now. Nepal is slowly sliding down the hill again. Sompal goes for not. Nepal 126 for the loss of six wickets.
So Karan Kesi has been promoted up the order. And I think giving him a chance is, is, is the right thing to do. We still have Gulshan to follow. For a moment, I thought it would be Gulshan, the left-handed Gulshan. But coach Monty has a different idea. And Aryan Dutt has finally got his first wicket. After conceding 25 runs, he's been expensive, but he's got that important wicket of Sompal Kami. Very, very capable with the ball, Sompal, uh, with the bat, Sompal, but he gave away his wicket very easily today. Yeah, and another important thing from here on for Nepal is the players have to resist themselves from playing those false sorts. They have to take the game towards the very end. Be there with Dipendra Singh Airi because his wicket is going to be very crucial. He can pull the game from any moment. Mind you, he has got that tendency of, you know, frustrating the opponents. On the other hand, Karan Casey, you, we all know how capable he is of hitting those big shots. But at the moment, they have to understand the urgency of the situation, take those ones and sing doubles and maybe when three overs are left they can go blinders easiest of catches and that's how Sompal Kami was dismissed Dependra Singh Ari pulls only a single to his name now that ends the 16th over 6 down for 128 on Nepal Nepal again in similar kind of situation they need 57 runs with four wickets in hands but the problem is they are not being able to build partnerships 24 balls now remaining and they need 57 runs 13 and over is what Nepal required from here and Kingma who's been used brilliantly by his captain has now been brought back into the attack first two overs in his first spell were excellent but in the third over he got hammered from Rohit Podel that sort of sh innings is something what is required for Nepal at the moment and Dipendra Singh Airi is the key man for Nepal slashes it hard clears that infield the ball racing towards the boundary a much needed boundary for Nepal on this occasion they have to score boundary in every over and keep getting those singles and doubles that's his bat speed, Kiran, because he swings the bat so hard. His, naturally, his natural bat speed is so quick that anything that even gets his outside edge will carry over the slip field at least. Excellent sword played down the ground. That's what he needs to do. He doesn't need to get carried away after scoring the boundary. One run down the ground, sensible thing because Karan Casey has got that capability of opening his arms and hitting those big shots. Dipendra Singhari, how many times has it been that he has actually been in this situation and rescued Nepal? Even yesterday, he nearly pulled out, snatched that game from the hands of Namibia. He has to play similar kind of knock today. Brilliant slow delivery, almost a slower Yorker this time by Kingma. Caught that important wicket of Kushal Burtil in his first over itself. And now all he has to do is contain Nepali batters from getting underneath him. The pressure certainly on Nepal's shoulders now. Dipendra Singh Airi and Karan Kisi, they'll have to go after the baller. But at the same time also make sure that no more wickets are lost. They still have Gulshan to come. Pratis can also swing his arms. But this is the pair. Nepal needs to run, uh, score big. Again, lucky for Devinder Singh Ari. The ball did not carry on to the fielder at long on this time. He launched onto the sword. But one thing I liked was he was not trying to hit it too hard. Otherwise, that ball would have easily gone in the hand of fielder that is placed in long on reason, mind you. 
So Dipendra is understanding the game and he has a plan in mind. He's playing accordingly, rotating the strike after that first boundary of the very first delivery. King Ma has got the two balls left in his spell, so that's a positive factor for Nepal. Staying deep inside the crease, Karan Kesi, but the change in pace, I think, did the trick. Only a single. And a boundary of the very, very first ball, and then four singles to follow. Can Nepal finish this off with a boundary? 49 required of 19 now. The crowd believe. And if this man stays till the end, I'm sure Nepal will be over that mark of 184. And it's uh, not going to be that easy as we are saying at the moment, Sachin, because Netherlands has played so many games. Their baller knows how to ball in the death overs. Nepal has to produce something out of the box to clinch the victory here. Inside is again. So that's been the problem for Nepal. They haven't been able to hit the ball right in the middle. That concludes over number 17. With three to go, Nepal are 137 for six. Now we're into the final three overs. Nepal still need 48 runs to go. 16 and over is what Nepal will have to score from here. Three batters at least very capable of hitting big shots. The Binder Singh Aidi, Karan Kesi, and the left-handed Gulshan Jha who's yet to come into bat. Aryan Dutt on to his final over now. One for 27. Short pulls and the Binder Singh Aidi strikes this big into the crowd. And the crowd are now jubilated and he has brought back Nepal in, into, into, into this contest. 70, 42 of 17. I think Nepal now need few more hits like this and certainly in the match. Sasin is getting greedy now, but welcome to the crease, says Dipendra Singh Airi to Aryan Dutt, who hasn't looked very comfortable bowling today. Dancing down and then the ball sails over the boundary into the crowds. They were dancing, they were cheering, and a lot of concern. You can see there, Vander Merv passing the masses to Aryan Dutt not to ball short deliveries. As you can see that it was on the slot, and a batter of Dipendra's caliber is not gonna miss on those occasions. So the game is evenly poised with that six. Nepal is back in the game. This time, lucky again for Dipendra Singh Aidi. He threw his bat at it. The connection was not that proper. But the ball goes in between the fielder at short third and the point fielder. A boundary to follow up that massive six. Ten runs off the first two deliveries. Can the Tiger bring Nepal back in the hunt? No matter how the scoreboard moves on it has to move on and that's what happened to Nepal unfortunate for Aryan that he is in serious pressure now two deliveries a six and a four faster one this time short and fast tried to slap it right in front Dependa Singh ID a single so I think he's done the job 13 runs of the first three deliveries Dependa Singh ID almost replicating the innings he played yesterday that particular six must have given some itching in the hands of Karan Casey as well because he is the one who does the destroying job and put opponents under pressure he's on strike but he has to be sensible the runs have come in this over he doesn't need to do anything fancy just stay there take the game towards as deep as possible because Dipendra is looking very very dangerous what delivery he knew where his leg stick is Karan Kesi just let that go. One bonus runs for Nepal and Aryan Dutt in complete pressure now. The idea was right. He wanted to attack the leg, leg stump of the batter. 
Caught in Casey this time, and he was smart enough to let it go. So bonus runs. 12 runs off the first three balls. Hit down the ground. They'll think for the second run. Not there. Rightly so, because Dipendra is batting beautifully out in the middle. And you know what? In the previous delivery session, I like the way how Karan left the ball. He was watching, pulled away his leg just to make sure it doesn't clip his leg on the way going towards the leg side. So he just wanted the runs to come. So And that sensible betting from um, Karan Casey, he is not in urgency to make runs because Dipendra Singh Airi, on the other hand, has taken that responsibility and is looking very aggressive. He can be innovative as well. Oh, one bounce over the fence. Crowd erupting. Devendra Singh ID providing exactly what his team needed at this point of time. They needed a big over. 16 runs already off this Aryan Dutt over. And the thought and the thinking went right as well because targeting Aryan, who has not been very consistent today, Dil scooped. Dil scooped this for a boundary. Devendra Singh ID. And mind you, you have to be absolute set out there to play those kinds of sort. Now he's keeping the bowlers guessing. He's swinging the bat all around. Just keep playing with the mind of the bowler. That concludes over number 18 with two to go. Nepal are 105, 55 for six. Well, then the final two overs coming up. Nepal need 30 of the last 12 balls. Dependra Singh ID leading Nepal's chase. Oh, he has hammered this. Wow. This is stand and deliver by Dependra Singh ID. The length was there and the timing absolutely immaculate and Dipendra Singh ID now taking Nepal towards that total posted by Netherlands a wonderful hit for six and that also brings up his 50 of only 28 balls Dipendra Singh ID is in no mood of celebrating probably telling everyone I'm not going to celebrate my 50 because I want Nepal to go home he is the tiger and the tiger is roaring into international cricket ground magnificent six brought off his 50 in just 28 deliveries would you believe that he was very cautious to start his innings but once he got settled the very first delivery mind you in this over as well is gone for six that's stand and deliver look how far has this gone this is one of the biggest hits i've seen by a nepali player oh that nearly went out of the ground and dependra singh id Quietly saying, telling everyone who doubted his abilities, form is temporary, class is permanent, and a tiger will always be classy. Slap this straight in front. Will it go all the way? Yes, it does. It's Karan Casey this time. Listen to the roar of the crowd. Second six of the over, off the bat of Karan Casey this time, and this pair now driving Nepal to the target. Dipendra and Karan are making the mock of the Dilip bowlers here in TU International Ground. Gokhtan is feeling the heat. Two sixes in this over. Karan Casey said, well, if Dipendra, you can do it, let me try as well. And what a hit it was. 13 runs of the first three deliveries. Just 17 needed of nine. The game is evenly poised. Nepal, I must say, has... Uh, is over Netherlands at the moment. Brilliant delivery. Wonderful comeback this by Gugton. Hammered for two sixes in this over and he comes back with this beautiful delivery. 17 needed now. This, this match still can go either ways from here. 
Netherlands will be looking to take at least a wicket. And Karan Kesi, the advantage for Dipendra Singh Aidi here is he also can rely on Karan Kesi's big hitting abilities. He's done it in the past. 17 needed of the eight deliveries. What do we have of the fifth ball? Slower one down the ground. They'll only settle for the single. And Dipendra Singh Aidi will face the final delivery of the penultimate over. Every dot delivery in here is like gold in disguise because seven deliveries, 16 runs needed anyone's game from here. Nepal would love to end this over with a boundary that will ease a bit of pressure moving into the final over. Here comes Cockton with his final delivery. Wonderful delivery again. It's the Boots of Karan Casey, but not troubling the batters at all to take that single. So last over will require 15 runs for Nepal to win it. Brilliant comeback. Brilliant, brilliant comeback this by the baller Gukton. Well, then the last run takes Nepal's score to 170. And we have one more over to go. Well, then Vandam Over will be bowling the final over. Nepal need 15 to win. Don't, don't blink your eyes, ladies and gentlemen, because we are coming towards an absolute thriller here at U International Ground. The final over, the massive six deliveries from Bandar Merv. Nepal needing 15 runs. The battle is on. Let the party begin here. Can Nepal pull it off is the big question. Will it be Nepal? Will it be Netherlands? Will there be a super over? Anything possible right now because Nepal will need 15 runs to win from here. And Van der Merwe, mind you, he is a very smart bowler. He can vary his length. He can vary his pace as well. Has all the experience under his belt. But the crowd now, fingers crossed, the first delivery comes down the track, comes Dipindra Singh Aidi, plays it towards the extra cover reason and a boundary to start with. What a start for Nepal. The first ball has been clubbed for a boundary by Dipindra Singh Aidi. That two of the bowling of Pander Moore, nine needed of five deliveries. This is getting interesting. 11, is it? Oh, I'm getting excited now, Sachin. I'm losing my calculations here. 11 runs, five deliveries. Dipendra Singh Ayuri in a strike, Van der Mer falling, anything can happen. So 11 needed of 5 now. Very doable, very doable. Comes down the track again, takes it on the full. The ball goes straight up. Where did that come from? Oh, Dipendra Singh ID, you beauty. He smacked the 6 out of nowhere. Dipendra Singh ID. Five needed of four now. He came down the track. Will, it will be interesting to see in the replay. He came down the track, took it on the full. He barely managed to reach to that delivery. Where did the power come from? Take a bow, Dipendra. You need a big heart to play this sort of shot under these sort of circumstances. The 10,000 people here in TU Cricket Ground are cheering. I'm very sure thousands and thousands of people back home are on their feet like we are now here in the commentary box this game is getting towards nepal's side just five needed of four deliveries smashes this again he is getting really really predictable here and comes back for the second run oh this is a run out against the runner play the bender singh already knows this is this a comeback chance for the netherlands there was never a second there. The ball had traveled really quick to the fielder. And the throw was good as well. 
And Karan Kisi, he sacrificed himself for his senior pro, Dipendra Singh Adi, the right thing to do, but I think this was a suicidal call. That was close again. He nearly missed to dislodge the bells there. And this match getting even more interesting now. You know what, Shachin? That was the right thing to do because the way Dipendra is batting, he needs to be in his strike. Karan played very well for 11. Now just three runs needed. TU is pumping. How often, how, how often have you heard this Nepal, Nepal chanted to you? The crowd absolutely behind their team, Dipendra Singh ID and the strike, 63 of 33 already, but what's more important is Nepal only needs four runs to win from here now. Three deliveries to go. At one point of time, Nepal needed 57 of 24. It looked unlikely, but the tiger, the king, Dipendra Sarkar is what they call him here. Dipendra Singh ID, 63 of 33. There is no wonder why everyone in Nepal loves him. Everyone who knows Nepal's cricket in international arena loves him. Here comes Bender Murph yeah! down the ground and he misses. It's completely the middle stump crashed it. Dipendra Singh Airi is out and there is a pin of silence here in TU. Netherlands are fighting and they are fighting back very strong. This was really, really smart. That's why experience plays such a big role in this beautiful sport. He knew Dipendra Singh Aidi was looking to come down. The trajectory was very flat this time by Vanda Marva, and he knew it. The expression says it all. Now, this is certainly a breakthrough for the Netherlands to come into this match. Four needed of two, four needed of two. And sadly for Nepal, it's Dipendra Singh Ali, the set man who is making his long walk back, will play a champion, 63 of 33. It's all happening here. The drama is unfolding. The tides are sifting from Nepal to Netherlands at the moment. The new batter in the crease will have a lot of responsibility, but what a knock. What a splendid knock. 34 delivery, 63 runs. Take a bow, Dipendra Singh Ayri. Thank you for entertaining the crowd. Thank you for serving the game. Let's head back live and see the drama unfold. So Pratis Chisi is very capable with the bat, mind you. Oh, that was a wild swing. That was a very, very wild swing by young Pratis. Put into pressure straight away. Four runs needed off the last ball now. Four runs needed. What an end to this match. This match can still go three ways from here. We can still have a super over. Nepal can win it from here. Netherlands now certainly on top. They have a new man in, Pratisisi, a very young Pratisisi, but this is an opportunity for him to also become a hero. The crowd, darling, crowd absolutely behind Nepal's side. Van der Merwe really, really pumped up. It will be interesting to see how he manages to bowl this final delivery. He can also bowl those quick fire Yorkers. I'm very sure he will be going about his business in this delivery. Will Pratish Jishi be the hero for Nepal or will it be Vendor Merv for Netherlands down the lake side? It will only be a single and this is how Nepal have succumbed to a defeat of only two runs. It was a wide delivery. He tried to go after it, Pratish Jishi. The crowd stunned. He cannot believe it. Gulsan Jha consoling Pratish GC, but he looks really, really disappointed because the length was there. The line was drifting as well. He, had he had just a bit of bat, the ball would have flown away over the heads of the fine leg fielder, but not to be. And against the crowd's expectation, Nepal have considered a two runs defeat. A big salute to Bender Merv on how he bowled after being smashed for those two boundaries in very first two deliveries. The experience came into play. He held his nerves. He held his calm, produced an absolute beauty to dismiss Dipendra Singh Airi, and that did the trick for Nepal. Pratish Jishi struggled with those two deliveries. At the end, 
it was Netherlands who got the better of Nepal. Yet another very close but disappointing end to the T20 game for Nepal. Lost by two wickets, but nevertheless, everyone got thoroughly entertained at the end. It was cricket who was victorious today in TU. Now the Netherlands side, they must be really proud of themselves because into the last over, need in, uh, Nepal needed 15. They got 10 of the very first two deliveries. Nepal needed five of four, but that's when the experience of Van der Merwe came in and played a massive role. The Bender Singh already dismissed. He came down the track, tried to play it towards the onside. The swing did not connect to the bat, uh, connect to the ball, and he was bowled. And since then, it was all Netherlands. And the experience of Van der Merwe that eventually led Netherlands to their first victory in this Disown Pibonet Presents Tri-Series. Nepal has got every reason to the way they play. They have to be proud. They can hold their head high because they sh have shown the fight against the quality bowling of Netherlands. Bender Merv, the man of the moment, who pulled out an absolute stunner. So Nepal fans not happy uh, when we'll come back. We'll come back with uh, other highlights and presentations as well. Well then, Netherlands eventually beating Nepal by two runs. It was a cracker of a match. The match turned. The pendulum swung both the ways at one point of time. Nepal needed only five or four balls in the Bender Singh Airi and Karan Kesi both at the center. You expected those batters to get Nepal home, not to be. And there were plenty of good looking boundaries, so let's have a look at the force. It's six cents by Red Ball. Plenty of good looking shots, the boundaries kept flowing, again the problem was the same, Nepal not being able to finish it off, the partnerships really lagging, that partnership between Defender Singh Aidi and Karan Kesi promised once, but again that fall of wicket made sure that Nepal would be short of the target just like yesterday, 20 was the difference yesterday, only two today, but eventually it's victory is what matters and Nepal falling short again. This was paddle sweep by Devendra Singh Aidi, just out of the reach. Rohit Powder played some really good looking shots. This was really ordinary by Aryan Dadi, he was disappointed with himself. 
and this pull shot was the shot of the day for me. He played good looking shots all around the park, Devendra Singh Aidi. And plenty of towering sixes as well. Started in this fashion. Asif Sheikh started the proceedings of sixes because Kushal Brutel was out early today as well. And this was another massive one, this off the bat of Kushal Mulla. And Dipendra Singh Aidi almost carried on with his innings yesterday. Took Nepal really deep. Some really, really fancy shots. This was the biggest of them all. Nearly gone out of the stadium itself. Karan Casey also joined in the party, but eventually. This shot was an unbelievable shot. He just reached at it. And the timing was such that the ball went for six. So five extras. That shows a, a lot of discipline that's, that was displayed by the Netherlands batters. Five, only five extras. 182 for eight is what Nepal managed. 50 for Rohit Powdell. Captain Powdell dismissed right after he got to this 50. Asif Sheikh got to that start as well, but the star with the bat was the Bender Singh ID. 63 of only 34 deliveries, the anchor of the innings really, but you'd be really disappointed that he could not get his team home. And eventually Nepal were packed for 182. They lost eight wickets. So eight wickets fell for Nepal. Again, the same problem, lack of wickets. Brought to you by Red Bull. So, Kushal Burtil, second duck, second consecutive duck for him. He was the first one to go, and this was an easy dismissal. Asif Sheikh coming down the track. Very, very thoughtful balling by Van der Merwe. Straight into the hands. Kushal Malla was dismissed in that manner, and Rohit Powdell was caught after being denied that LBW shout. He was the fourth to go. Sandeep Zora, this was a little too casual. The length was not there at all to play that shot. And Sompal Gami again, another, this was the softest dismissal. And after Sompal was dismissed, there was a partnership between Dipendra and Karan Kesi, which was broken because of this run out. Karan Kesi, there was not a single there by any stretch of imagination. Wickets brought to you by Red Bull. So, a wicket each wickets. for Kingma Cotton and two wickets for Van der Merwe. He was the pick of the ballers, giving away only 24 in his four overs. And mind you, those 24 runs, 10 out of those 24 runs were off the last over of his. So, he, he was tremendously economical and others also supported the cause of defending this total posted by Namibia. Only five extras that says volumes about the discipline maintained by the, Nami uh, by the Netherlands ballers. And 182 for 8 is what they managed. So that's the match summary. Netherlands eventually went on to win this match by two runs. We'll take a short break. And when we, when we come back, in the other side of the break will be the presentations.
Hello and welcome to the post-match presentation. This is the match number two of Dixon 518 presents T20I Triangular Series between Nepal, Namibia and Netherlands. Well, what an absolute thriller of a contest we have just witnessed here. But at the end, it was the Dutch side who held their nub to register a famous victory here. Congratulations to the Dutch side and the win and tough luck to Nepal. Before I begin the post-match presentation and the individual awards, I would like to have a quick chat with the captain of Nepal, Rohit Podel. Rohit, tough luck on the loss. He's a very close eye circle. He's a very close eye circle. He's a very close eye circle. But he's finally a winner. What's the momentum of the momentum? I think it's a good game. I think it's a good game. I think it's a good game. It's a good game. It's a good game. 10-12 overs, but still, when we were in the death over, especially Dippi Dai and Karan Dai, when we were in the death over, in the last death over, I think it was very good. And in that sense, we were in the last chip in the bowling unit. As a bowling unit, we were in the last chip in the bowling unit. And in the batting, we were perfect in the last 19 overs. And Dippi Dai was in the last game, but still, luckily, unluckily, we were cross the second line, but still, Dippi Dai was excellent. Yeah, Pocky Penny, Dipendra Singh, he almost liked it, the last moment of the match, and now, this is a World Cup here, this is a World Cup, and this is a close match, and this is a match, and this match, this is a result in favor, and this is important, just to like, keeping the thing, World Cup, there is no signage, I mean, now. I think it's a good thing, because I'm playing in the Netherlands, I'm playing in the Netherlands, and 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 I'm playing in the Netherlands, so I'm playing in the Netherlands, and I'm playing in the Netherlands, so I think it's a good game. Well, tough luck as a good idea, and you have any matches as a good idea. Thank you. Well, it was a good idea. Now, I'd like to have a quick chat with the captain of the dot side, Scott, as well. Scott Edward, as well. Brilliant win, Scott. How was the match overall? Yeah, it was a, it was a tight one. Um, you know, I thought both teams played well in patches, probably poorly in patches. Um, but, yeah, super proud that, uh, you know, we're probably against it in that last over, and we found a way to win. Well, you guys were playing the T20I match after a long, long time, but when you guys entered the field, it did not seem that, you know, we were coming back after a long break, especially in this format. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, proud of the way the guys went about it. As, as I said, there was a few rusty things in there with, with bat and ball, but, um, yeah, it's, it's an awesome hit out for us, and it's a, it's a great start for our preparation for the World Cup. What was going in your mind while Dipindra Singhari was batting, especially in the last two overs? Yeah, he was hitting him pretty cleanly. Um, yeah, I, I felt we just didn't quite execute, and every time we were slightly off, um, he was obviously punishing us. So, yeah, um, he batted extremely well, and we obviously had to get him out there at the end to win. Yeah, brilliant win. Congratulations on the win, and be sure for the upcoming matches. Now then, after the quick chat with the captain, let's move towards the individual awards. Now, first of the award is going to be Mahazatra sort of the day, and to present up with the award, I would like to invite up front Mr. Ravindra Singh Bania, actor and producer from the movie, and Mr. Pradeep Bhattrai, the director of the movie, will be presenting the check of Mahazatra sort of the day. Welcome, sir. Now, Mahazatra sort of the day, it goes to that one person, especially that one hit of Tim Gurkton, which went to us. That area, I think the ball is still hovering over there. It's going to be Dipendra Singh Airi. Congratulations to Dipendra and thank you, sir, as well. Now, the next award up front is Food Man to Delivery of the Match. And to present up with the award, I would like to invite Mr. Sandesh Gewali, Assistant Finance Manager at Food Man to. He will be presenting up with the best delivery of the match, sponsored by Food Man to. It's going to be a check of rupees 10,000. And it goes to that beautiful delivery who took the wicket of Kusal Bhutel. It's going to be Vivian Kingwa. Thank you, sir, and congratulations to Vivian as well. Now let's move towards the player of the match, and with the player of the match award, we have a few added awards as well. First of all, it's going to be Sri K's performer of the match check, which will be presented by Navaraj Sankar, who is manager at Sri K's here well. And also I would like to invite our friend, Ms. Niti Basnit from the Bian International Nepal Sales and Marketing Aid at 
KFC and Pizza Hut who will be presenting up with the KFC congratulations player of the match check and it's going to be Cyber and Engelbrot for his brilliant inning of 49 and with the ball 2 for 13 of 2 overs. Quite a few awards to collect for Cy Bryant today. Thank you and congratulations. I'd like to ask Cy Bryant to wait here and now I'd like to call upon the Central Committee Board Member of Nep Cricket Association of Nepal, Mr. Durga Raj Prathak, who will be handing over the official player of the match trophy to him. Thank you and congratulations. Well, that was it from the post-match presentations. Sachin is waiting up in the commentary box for the highlights to go up. Over to you, Sachin. Thank you, people. A very happy Netherlands side there. They won the match by two runs. And this was a close match. This went right down to the wire. But Netherlands, the experience of Van der Werth was too much for the Nepali batters to handle in the final over. Dependent Singh ID is smacked two boundaries in the final over in the very first two deliveries of the last over. But eventually, his dismissal meant that Nepal would go on to lose this match by two runs. So we have another encounter that's coming in. The first time in this series. In the disc home five minute presents the T20 uh, tri series. It will be the two visiting teams, the Netherlands and the, the uh, and Namibia, who will be battling it out. That will be the third match of the series, and will be live on Action Sports from 11 a.m. Thank you for being us. Uh, thank you for being with us.